What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian, A Hero's Peril Season 2 Part 9. Reading. Sun's Heir, Death's Guardian 2, A Hero's Peril by Engineer Forever. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto or Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Chapter 9 Percy was having a very nice vacation, if he said so himself. Nice, huh? Annabeth asked him dryly and the water boy shrugged. I really deserved one to be honest. He said, humph. Annabeth pouted since he really worried her. For the past two days, time is a lie. Nico muttered, it was a lot longer than that. He got to lounge on a beach, being served blue drinks from invisible and quiet servants. He had pleasant conversations with the pretty girl, Calypso the sorceress, who at first he was wary of but quickly realized she wasn't like Circe or her father Atlas. He also noticed she seemed to pull away whenever they have a nice time. Calypso also made great dinners as well as her fantastic breakfasts and lunches, on par with the meals at Camp Half-Blood. Percy had a smile on his face as Annabeth grabbed his arm and hugged it, a pout on her face. Percy looked at her with a slight chuckle, making her mock glare at him. And best of all, he didn't have to worry about getting killed by monsters. I'd like that to be honest. Leo admitted, he didn't even have to worry about training to fight monsters. Another bonus was that he didn't have to deal with Naruto taunting him during spars or just in general. You just don't like him. Be quiet, Jason. He didn't have to deal with his annoying lightning using cousin. Annoying, huh? Well, it is true. Watch it, fish boy. Or her romance with the taunting whiskered asshole. Talia scowled at the boy as he grinned at her. It was what she got for teasing him and Annabeth all the time. Finally. Probably beating not worrying about the monsters trying to kill him, was not worrying about the great prophecy. Okay, that one I admit was a tough one. Percy said, making the gods shift a bit. Life was good. Percy was currently doing his favorite activity of relaxing on the beach, his arms behind his head acting as a pillow while the sea breeze drifted across him like a cool blanket. He looked up at the sun, which he knew to be Apollo's chariot and gave it a light glare as it reminded him of his tormentor and the subject of his current anger, more than Luke even. Wow, harsh, Percy. Talia whistled. Percy went a bit pink, shut up. He mumbled. He shook the thoughts away so he didn't return to that sense of mind, and his thoughts drifted to the honey blonde haired strategist. Annabeth beamed at that. He hoped Annabeth and Nico made it out all right, which they probably did thanks to Nico's shadow travel. Still though, Percy couldn't help but worry about his friends. Because he wouldn't be Percy if he didn't. Frank commented. Percy's head tilted back so he could look at the sky. He wondered what Annabeth was doing right now. Once again, Annabeth was beaming. Good afternoon, Percy. Calypso's voice snapped him from his thoughts. Why that little, Annabeth? Percy frowned at his girlfriend, making her humph a bit. She was kind of cute all jealous like he noted. Percy looked over again and was once more in awe of her appearance. The sun gleamed pleasantly off her milky skin, increasing her natural beauty. Her caramel-looking hair drifted in the breeze and that wonderful smell of cinnamon filled the sun of Poseidon's nose. At the moment, she was the epitome of the word angel. Can we please speed through this part? Annabeth asked with a deep pout. No, was the unified answer. She smiled at him a smile that had his face turning slightly red. May I join you? Uh, yeah, it's your island, right? Percy said, giving her a light smile. I suppose it is, Calypso said. She sat next to him, rather close. Annabeth glowered a bit, making some roll their eyes, well, not Piper. She understood completely, and enjoyed listening to the ocean's calming, yet constantly drifting waves. Poseidon has been rather restless lately, hasn't he? Of course I am, yeah, Percy said a bit hesitantly. He felt guilty at feeling relaxed while Poseidon fretted about something, most likely Tyson. Or you, the sea god commented. Bah, Hades waved him off, he's on an island, and you knew he was there. Nonetheless I was still worried. The lord of the ocean huffed. But at the same time he felt incredibly righteous. Poseidon faltered at that while his brother smirked at him as Percy looked sheepish, knowing what his other was thinking. After all, it was his sire that thrust him headfirst into the quest for Zeus' lightning bolt when he had, 
Oh, two weeks of training. Actually, not even two weeks. Sorry, the sea god muttered, but he needed his son. Since then, it has been a never-ending nightmare nearly every summer he came to camp and one winter. So Percy was leaning more towards righteousness, feeling justified in this vacation he got out of sheer luck. Poseidon brooded while Percy looked slightly apologetic as the god's siblings and relatives snickered a bit at him. I would love to be able to sit here all day, but I require some assistance in the garden. Calypso said, looking to Percy with a small smile. Do you think you could help me? In the garden? Percy asked. You know, plants and stuff, Percy. I know. Nico, the boy said dryly to his cousin. She nodded once and Percy shrugged. Sure, why not? Thank you, Percy, the lady of Ogagia said, giving him another bright smile that had him looking away sheepishly. She stood and led him to her garden on the other side of the island. Percy was in awe of it. It was gorgeous, with flowers of all shapes, sizes and colors. There were budding flowers centered on a small patch directly under the sky looking like a soft ball of silver. It really is a beautiful sight, Aphrodite commented, just one of the things she likes to use to entrance someone to stay. Or she just likes to garden. Demeter corrected her. Oh, of course, the love goddess nodded mockingly. The most help will be needed when the moon rises, but for now can you mix some of this fresh soil in? Calypso asked, once more sounding a bit distant. Sure, Percy said with a shrug. He helped Calypso with her garden, much like he had helped his mom before. He wasn't born with a green thumb like Katie was, but he was good at doing manual labor for the girl. Anyone can do manual labor. Ares snorted. Zeus smirked at Poseidon. Indeed, I remember a certain god who had to build a wall. It must be hereditary. His brother glowered while Hades snickered. Oh, sure. Rub salt in the wound that he had to serve a mortal for a bit but he got his payback, until his damn nephew ruined it. Mixing the soil was a tedious but at the same time relaxing task, one that let him and Calypso talk a bit more, mostly about the queen of the island herself. When it came to why she was on the island, she started to clam up again, but stopped. Her eyes met his, and Percy swore he heard his heart pound in his chest. Why I am here, Percy? I, Calypso began only to cut herself off as her eyes looked behind him and she immediately bowed. Lord Hephaestus. Ah, you ruined it, Hef. Meh. The god shrugged, uncaringly. Calypso. Hephaestus said with a nod. He looked down to Percy and spoke. We need a moment alone, please. Manners. Poseidon grinned, must have gotten it from Thetis. He commented, making Hera frown at him along with Zeus. Of course, Calypso said. She can stay, it's her island, isn't it? Percy asked, Hephaestus arching a brow at the question. This is matters of the private sort. Hephaestus said gruffly. Calypso put a hand on Percy's shoulder as he made to protest, shaking her head and making him stop. She gave another bow and left the two alone. Hephaestus let out a soft sigh. Shame bowed her, could have had a much better life if she made good choices. Real shame. Apollo pouted but Artemis glared at him, what? It is. What do you mean? Not my story to tell. Hephaestus said with a grunt. You destroyed my workshop, all those tools are going to need to be replaced. Yeah but the telekines are dead. Percy said, still had to replace them. Oh, Ares rolled his eyes, wave of your hand and you have them, if not, you make them. Shut up you baby, says the one afraid of pickle jars. Those things are dangerous. Not the pickles, but just the jars, stupid fear. Yes they are, rotten ingrates. Hephaestus said with a scowl on his face as his beard burst into flame. He shrugged it off. Still though, your little explosion had a side effect. All the gods locked onto Percy, even his father, making the boy squirm. What do you mean? Percy asked, a bad feeling swelling in his stomach. Hephaestus looked down at him. You stirred Typhoon, a monster I would really rather not have to fight again. None of us did, the gods said as one. Typhoon, Percy asked, getting a nod. That was one monster story he knew by heart. The monster that nearly beat the Olympians. Yes, the gods said as one. Yes, uh, oops. Zeus just looked at his nephew incredulously, 
Oops, really, Percy Jackson, just an oops. My bad, there's just no hope for this one. Hades mumbled a Poseidon glared at his brothers. Okay, so his son messed up, rather big time, but still. It was handled, get over it. Hephaestus just glared at him before continuing. Listen, demigods are vanishing from camp and Daedalus has yet to be found. Well it's only been like two days. Two days, right. Dot the time runs slower here. Hephaestus mumbled, spiraling off into making a machine that aligned time everywhere. A super clock of some sort. Percy weakly cleared his throat and Hephaestus looked at him. Hum, oh, right, no, not two days. Two weeks have passed, Percy Jackson. Well, there's reality in the face for you. Leo smirked. T two weeks, Percy asked, his face paling. Yep, Hephaestus said with a nod. He scratched his beard. Now what else was I going to say? Ah, right, the camp could use your strength, son of the Earthshaker. Yes, go shake it up for us, Percy. Frank, I swear, next time you're a small animal. I'm sure they'll get along fine without me. Percy said, I mean, it's been two weeks. Not like we were worried. Annabeth glared at him. Sorry, and yet Daedalus has not been found. Hephaestus said, you were supposed to help us after we cleared out your workshop. Percy said, I did say I would. Hephaestus said, frowning. For a moment, Percy thought the god was going to pull a Jirion on him, but he was proven wrong as Hephaestus shrugged. It's not like it would do any harm. You mean you're going to help? I said I would, Hephaestus said, scowling at him for thinking otherwise. Seriously, I know how to keep my word. The smith huffed, getting some looks from his family, even if it was true. While Percy gave him an apologetic wince, the god of the forge snorted. Humph. Well, you see, Theseus had help through the labyrinth. Oh, most certainly, ungrateful brat. Dionysus snorted as the demigod's father rolled his eyes. And he thought Hades held a grudge. The thread, Percy said, recalling the story. And something else, Ariadne, she wasn't merely one who gave him string, as if string alone could get you through the labyrinth. Hephaestus snorted, he saw Percy furrow his brows in confusion. Some mortals have the ability to see through the mist. Ariadne was one of them. It's a rare ability and running into one who can is at least ten times the chance of actually having it. Clear-sighted mortals, everyone said, you have wished for something you already have. Hera's voice echoed in the son of Poseidon's head. Annabeth pouted at that, not figuring it out since it was so simple. Percy's eyes went wide as he thought about the eccentric and fun Rachel Elizabeth Dare, the girl who saw the vampire cheerleaders, the skeletons on Hoover Dam and knew about his real life as a demigod. That explained a whole lot. And Annabeth's next rival, Aphrodite nodded as the blonde girl groaned at that. That was going to be painful to see. Just something to think about, Hephaestus said, while Percy came to terms with his realization. Before Percy could ask anything else, the smith god vanished in a large pillar of fire. Percy stared at the spot Hephaestus stood at before turning around to find Calypso and ask her some more questions. Two weeks had passed since Annabeth's return from her quest, and the night had fallen on Michael Yu's birthday and Mr. D and Chiron had told all campers to go to the amphitheater. Oh, this is going to be funny. Percy grinned, man, Clarice was going to miss out on this. Talia and Annabeth took a seat next to Piper and Leo the two half-siblings playfully arguing over who had the better week. I did, the two said, mock glaring at each other before laughing. Michael Yu sat on Leo's other side while Talia took the seat next to Piper and Annabeth the seat next to Talia. They shared a greeting and looked to the stage as it suddenly burst into light, four members of Apollo's cabin on the stage, with a familiar whiskered teen standing in front of them. Boy band, nice going kids. Apollo whistled as Hermes rolled his eyes. All right, calm down, never. They all wore red uniforms that looked like flight apparel and stood at attention. Talia made out Naruto's younger twin brothers John and Owen, who were both equally hams like her boyfriend was, on the right while Will and the cabin counselor Lee were standing at to her bow's left, the counselor winking into the stands no doubt where his girlfriend Katie was. Go Lee. Demeter huffed a bit as Apollo praised his sons for being awesome like him, as always. 
Will was looking to the right, where Nico sat near another child of Apollo who was helping Bianca get into her own seat. Hades and Nico grumbled. My kids, they just get all the girls. Apollo, shut up, the three elder gods said, glaring at the blonde. He just shrugged, don't be hating my genetic swagger. Talia caught Naruto's eye as she looked back at him, he smiled reassuringly at her. Stagehands, most likely clones or other Cabin 7 members, were preparing things around them. One gave Naruto a mic and he grinned as he stepped forward. Hello Camp Half-Blood, are you all having a good summer? His question was met with cheers and applause, Naruto beaming at the reply he got. Awesome. Well, in case some of you didn't know we got a birthday boy in the audience. Oh, this is going to be priceless. Annabeth giggled, poor Michael. The spotlights spun around before landing on Michael, making him look like a deer. The crowd clapped mundanely and Naruto tisked in disapproval. Oh come on, I know we don't do this for everyone, but Blackie's my little bro. I wanted to give him a cool show for his birthday, and while maybe seeing his favorite artists in person would have been better, we're going to do our best. So give him a round of applause and everyone get ready for the classic song, Happy Birthday. I can feel his pain. Right from here, Leo winced, poor Blackie. There was grumbling now, but Naruto chose to ignore Cabin 5's disapproval as he cleared his throat, his brothers behind him getting some microphones of their own. The four of them sang together, making a sweet harmony that had the crowd silent in awe. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Michael. They paused and cleared their throats. Happy birthday YY, to OOU. Michael flushed and sunk into his seat, trying to stay out of the spotlight, which was hilariously ironic considering who his father was. Indeed, Arte, you are hurtful. But Artemis just smiled sweetly at him, making the sun god pout. Before the crowd burst into applause and joined the four brothers in yelling out aloud, Happy birthday, Michael Yu. The four brothers stepped back and got several instruments handed to them, or in Will's case, took a seat behind some drums. Dad my drummer boy, strike those drums like a pro. Now, Naruto said as the crowd quieted and the spotlights returned to him looking out into the audience as his brothers tuned their instruments. Michael Yu is turning 15 today, so these songs are ones we've chosen from his personal playlist. So that's what happened to my iPod. Michael said under his breath with wide eyes. He suddenly felt the urge to shrink away in embarrassment. Got some embarrassing songs on there. Piper teasingly asked. Oh, who doesn't? Apollo snorted. Me, Talia said smugly. Uh-huh, sure. Apollo said and coughed into his hand, Lair. Oh, sorry, tickle in my throat. And after sorting through the Hillary Duff and Backstreet Boys, Naruto said, pausing as the crowd laughed. That poor soul. Hazel shook her head, feeling sorry for him now. He waited for it to die down before raising his hands. Kidding, kidding, his taste isn't that bad. We found a few good songs to share with the rest of you, especially in these troubled times. It's a bit retro, though. So some of you may want to have your pamphlets ready. This first one I picked because not only is it friggin hilarious, it reminds me of something I deem important. I wonder who, Aphrodite teetered with a giggles. He said something not someone, Aphrodite. Bah, Artemis, read in between the lines. Talia's eyes widened and she flushed bright red as her eyes met his for a split second. He wouldn't. Ha, see. Even other Talia knows. Great. The girl in question grumbled, looking a bit pink and curious about the song choice. Ready guys? Naruto asked, turning around to look at his brothers. Lee gave a thumbs up from where he was on the left, his bass at the ready. Will played with his uniquely ridged drumsticks before giving a nod. John and Owen both gave him grins, the twins holding their guitars at the ready. Naruto put the microphone back on its stand before nodding at Lee. Uga Chaka, Uga Uga, Uga Chaka, Uga Uga, Uga Chaka, Uga Uga, Uga Chaka. Lee, John and Owen started to sing in chorus. Naruto cleared his throat softly before he began to sing. I love this song. Apollo gushed, so perfect. Talia groaned and palmed her pink face, great. 
I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me, girl you just don't realize what you do to me. Naruto said, his voice a bit lower than normal. When you hold me in your arms, so tight you let me know everything's all right. There were a few sighs from some of Piper's sisters seated nearby and Talia frowned. Hey, that's my man, Annabeth said, trying to copy Talia's face. Annie, I swear, before she could stop their thoughts with a strong encouraging conversation. Kicking their asses, Percy translated, pretty much, Talia nodded shamelessly. Naruto brought a bit of life to his song, the beat picking up as he lightly danced to the music on stage while he gripped his microphone. I I I'm hooked on a feeling, I'm high on believing, that you're in love with me e e e. Naruto said, pointing out to the audience while his eyes met Talia's. Serenade the beauty, Naruto. Talia just buried her face in her hands. The crowd cheered, unable to resist the happy beat and the positive lyrics, except for the sourpusses in the cabins or cabin five members shook their head, Mark though was laughing remembering a time when his mom was humming this song while she did the dishes and several girls swooned. Talia flushed and crossed her arms, closing off her emotions as she felt a bit breached. This was so not cool. Lips as sweet as candy, its taste is on my mind, girl you've got me thirsty, for another RR cup of YN. I know I am, Dionysus whined a little. He's doing okay, Michael said under his breath a bit jealous that his voice wasn't that deep and kept cracking at times. Ah, Hermes nodded, the awkward teenage years. Aren't you still in those, Herm? You are so hurtful, the Wing Chu messenger told his sunny brother, who just grinned cheekily. Okay, this is so hot uh, a girl from Cabin 10 began, turning to challenge Michael's assessment before withering under Talia's glare. Um, it's it's good I guess. Damn right, thought so. Talia said with a nod as the girl turned back around. She watched her boyfriend on stage as he brought himself close to the mic. Got a bug from you girl, but I don't need no cure, I'll just stay a victim, if I can pursue you you Naruto sang, leaning forward a bit before snapping back upright. All the good love, when we're on our own, keep it up girl, yeah you turn me on. I I I'm hooked on a feeling. I'm high on believing, that you're in love with me ee ee. And she is, the Lady of Doves giggled. The music quieted down when Naruto held his hands up and the four brothers started the Uga Chaka chant. Naruto cleared his throat and began again. All the good love, when we're on our own, keep it up girl, yeah, you turn me on. Naruto paused and nodded his head, causing Will to bang down on his drums before all the sons of Apollo sang the chorus. I I I'm hooked on a feeling. I'm high on believing that you're in love with me. I'm hooked on a feeling. I'm high on believing that you're in love with me. Naruto grabbed the microphone and leaned forward a bit. I said I'm hooked on a feeling and I'm high on believing that you're in love with me. I'm hooked on a feel ling. Talia, your retort, shut up. McLean, will ended it with a final drum and Naruto bowed his head while the campers applauded and cheered. Talia watched the rest of the show with a heated gaze locked on her boyfriend. He and his brother swapped places all performing lead on their own picks from the iPod that belonged to the very bright red and trying to hide birthday boy in the stands. Ah, suck it up, kid. Hermes snickered. Admittedly, it was sort of hot to see Naruto do the guitar solo to live in on a prayer. See, musicians get all the girls. Apollo grinned. Leo turned to Nico. Wanna start a band? No, was the instant reply, making the pyro pout. She formed an idea as she watched the whiskered teen take the bass from his brother for the next song. And this idea is no doubt to get busy with the lead singer, Apollo teased the hunter. Apollo, Artemis frowned, I highly doubt that is it, her brother snorted. Sure, after the show ended, Annabeth turned to ask Talia what she thought of the show but blinked in confusion when she saw that the daughter of Zeus was gone. To hook up, Apollo, Zeus frowned, what? The sun god shrugged, it is so going to happen. Shut up, Talia groaned, she did not want to hear this. She looked back on stage to see the wheelchair-bound Bianca giving Will a deep kiss. Wianca for the win, Apollo. Hades raged as the sun god snickered, his kids were awesome. And Lee embracing his own girlfriend. Two for two, Apollo. Demeter frowned, 
The daughter of Athena unknowingly frowned alongside a glaring Nico D'Angelo, whose black eyes were locked on the forms of his sister and the boy kissing her. Nico, you have my permission to stab him in the back. Sure, dad. Whoa, whoa, hey. Apollo shouted, that's a tad extreme, isn't it? No, the two residents of the underworld said clearly with glares to the sun god. The daughter of Athena had two thoughts running through her mind, the first being where her friend had gone. For some hot lovin' of her own. It's not happening, Talia shouted, seriously, this was not cool. And the second being what happened to the green-eyed boy that was her, arguably, closest friend. She just wants to kiss him. 2. Aphrodite giggled as Annabeth went pink at that and Athena glared at her fellow goddess. Unknown to her, Annabeth's first pondering could be resolved if unbothered to look behind the amphitheater, where a raven-haired girl with electric blue eyes had her hands fisted in a mess of blonde hair belonging to a whiskered teen. His hands were on her waist and his lips were pressed firmly against hers, parting and allowing entry and exit as they partook in the aptly named French kissing. You were saying, Talia, Okay, so we're kissing. That's it, the hunter shouted, her face red at how deep she was going, what, was she checking his tonsils? They parted for a moment and Naruto panted. Holy shit, Talia, what's the big idea? Pour some sugar on me, Apollo. What, I'm just singing, geez. No talking, whiskers, Talia said, claiming his lips once more as his hands drifted south instinctually, but hesitated. She appreciated his respect for her desire to stay a maiden as he jokingly called it. It's not a joke, Artemis frowned, but right now, it was just annoying. Talia pulled away and electric blue glared into cerulean skies with suns within them. Tonight. Booyah. Apollo cheered as Talia paled. Zeus and Jason were not looking so well either. So, we see in a sex scene. Leo. Tonight. He asked, and she groaned pulling him into another heated kiss. That seemed to get the message across as he started to, well, indulge his instincts. Which he got from his father, Artemis glared. Hey, I got them from him. The sun god pointed to Zeus. To be fair, Hera said, it's Talia who is starting this, she glared at Zeus, so she got it from him. Zeus stammered a bit as Talia was now both pale and red, looking faintish. Percy was a bit green himself if he was honest. Talia gave a surprised grunt when he turned them around, her back pressed against the wall of the stage and her hands dropped to Naruto's shoulders. Oh. Reverse. Aphrodite. No commentary. Artemis pleaded. No. Begged. Suffer. Virgin. After a moment, they broke for air once more. So, doubt Raijiji will let us in the cabin with that intent. He'd be dead the second he would walk in. Zeus scowled as Apollo winced at that. Dad might, but, yep, have you no shame, nope. I'll pass on the possible voyeur from a god, thanks. Talia said dryly. Hey, I wouldn't watch. At least you have some reedy. I'd tape it, I take back what I was about to say. Artemis scowled as Talia was getting dizzy now, Jason not far behind her. Don't you have an apartment in New York? Holy shit, yes I do. Naruto said. Blinking, he totally forgot about the penthouse suite he was given as a makeshift apology gift from Apollo. And you're welcome, Naruto. Apollo beamed as his sister and father glared heatedly at him. He closed his eyes and thought about his destination before he said the magic word. Horatian. They reappeared in a dark apartment, absent of dust due to the excellent room service. Naruto turned around and looked at his old home for a moment and silently thanked his dad for keeping it in his name, as seen by the kunai thrown into the wall. Before he could say anything, Talia pushed him back on the bed and climbed atop him, both of them having roguish grins on their faces. Ah, the top position, the sign of dominance. The lust of Zeus is strong in this one. Hades. Hestia glared at her snickering brother as Zeus looked a bit pink in the face at that. It was kinda sorta true. Is it over yet? Percy begged. No. Nico told him in a bored tone. Read faster. Annabeth shouted with a red face, not needing to know this. Running away with your boyfriend to his apartment. Daring, aren't you? Naruto asked. Talia smirked and leaned down to kiss him. With a gentle push, he kept her at bay as a serious look overcame his features. Are you sure you want to do this? 
No, the Grace siblings and Zeus shouted. Talia leaned back and shucked her jacket off, grabbing the bottom of her camp half-blood shirt and lifting it up over her head, tossing it to the side. How bold, Aphrodite gushed, while Naruto gaped at the daring choice of a lacy black brassiere. I take that back, now that is bold. Kill me, Talia cried out. Talia grabbed the collar of his camp shirt and tugged, ripping it open to reveal his chest. Okay, that's kinda sexy. Leo, I swear, Jason said, glaring at his friend, though the effect was lost because he was looking green. Jason, let me watch my free porn. Valdez, Talia said, glaring at the elfish boy. Hey, Talia, what the he? Shut up, whiskers, Talia said as she lowered her lips to his. Yeah, just shut up and go for a ride. Apollo was glowing with pride as Talia passed out. Literally. Naruto swiftly obliged, keeping his lips on hers, but looking to the moon that seemed to be glaring through the window at him. I would because you're acting like your father. Oh, it was going to happen sooner or later, said father argued to his twin. A quick gesture and the curtains closed thanks to the sensors added into them. Why that little, Artemis said, turning to glare at her twin. The young couple was engulfed in darkness, and they indulged in the acts that made many like them in the first place. Indeed, Hermes and Apollo nodded while the demigods looked green. The whiskered blonde groaned as the sunlight beamed through the window as if full of pride, all directed at him. Go Naruto, go Naruto, it's your birthday. Ah man, we didn't even get to see anything, cope out. Leo pouted. Is it over? Percy asked. Yes, a red-faced Annabeth answered. Wow, if Talia wasn't a hunter. The hunter in question had gotten up from her blackout and heard the affirmative. Thank the gods, she mumbled, she was not ready to see, well, herself do it. Far too creepy and weird. And maybe a little hot, gah. No, bad thoughts. The thick curtains and their damned programmed opening were wide open, leaving the air of Helios and his bedmate in full view of the bright sunlight. Just to intensify that afterglow, Apollo. Artemis glared at him. Apollo just laughed it off. Naruto cracked an eye open and glared at the sun, making a wave of his hand and closing the blinds. Naruto smirked victoriously. Ah, Apollo pouted. That ought to teach you. He said quietly getting a soft grumble from his still-sleeping girlfriend as she nuzzled into his side. So, Talia likes to cuddle, too. I will kill you, McLean, I swear it. Naruto let his head roll to look at the serene peace that was on Talia's face. Taming the beast, huh? Ares. Hestia scowled just the war god just gave a laugh. She was glowing from their late-night shenanigans, and dare he think it, but Naruto felt she looked more beautiful than Aphrodite at the moment. Aphrodite pursed her lips, well, an afterglow will do that to any girl, so I can let it slide. This time. Why thank you, Talia said sarcastically, looking pink in the face. Anytime, well, if you want to look like that, no. The hunter mumbled. His right arm was wrapped over her shoulders and much like a cheesy cable television show the covers were doing their job, protecting them from peeping toms, or worse, gods. The worst of all peepers. Artemis commented, oh, we're just proud of our kids as all. Hermes waved off. Exactly. Apollo nodded, grinning like a loon. Zeus huffed at that but Poseidon said, oh, don't act all high and mighty. I remember when Roosevelt had his first threesome, you were like a peacock. Hey, the king and queen said, for their own reasons. Naruto's finger lightly brushed Talia's cheek and she gave a content sigh at the action. Like wildcat turned kitten, goddess or not I'll shoot you. Talia roared at the love goddess, who was enjoying every second of this. Rai Gigi is so going to have my head for this, if he even knows about it. Naruto thought, shuddering. Oh, it'll be more than your head. Oh, good, it's safe to talk again. Naruto's eyes went wide and he abruptly stopped stroking Talia's cheek. Helios. Oh man, Apollo whined, he got to see the whole thing so unfair. Talia looked like she was going to go catatonic at that. Yep, still here. And wow, what a show. Do tell, hell. Shut up. I mean, how do you do that thing with your leg? I didn't even think that was a possible position and I'm a friggin' god. Hum, 
Apollo rubbed his chin as Talia was getting dizzy again. Keep talking. Hell, keep talking. Shut up. Then there was that belt. Damn, I've seen a lot of strange things, but damn kid. Kinky. Leo, Jason glared. Shut up. And the spanking. Talia likes it dirty. Talia screamed in anguish and hate, pulling her hair as she raged. Why? Why her? Why do the fates enjoy torturing her so? Well, it could have been Naruto, Apollo. Aphrodite said with a giggle that had the demigods blushing. Nah, Talia just seems the type for it. Apollo quickly rebuffed. Lady Artemis. Talia whined, nearly crying. Okay, enough, now. The huntress said, but the other gods just grinned at her. Oh, this will never die. Ever. Hermes said with a snort. Shut up. Helios. Ah, don't worry about it, kid. I won't tell anyone. Naruto could imagine the titan giving him a wink of reassurance. Hell, I'll even give you a few pointers. I mean, I've been around the block a few times during my life. True, go for the maximum pleasure points, Naruto. Nothing wrong with asking for some help. Aphrodite nodded and looked at her daughter, making Piper go red in the face. Mom, she shouted with embarrassment, but the goddess just giggled. I swear to Tartarus. Helios, let me show you something. Oh really what would that by order? Geez what the hell are those things? The green, the spandex, those eyebrows. By order, Naruto, make it stop. Hey, Apollo frowned, he's just trying to help. Kid, nothing wrong with that. It has everything to do with what is wrong, with all of you. Artemis exclaimed. Naruto just grinned as Helios' presence faded away into the background. Ah, even now Rock Lee and Might Guy have his back. Maybe he should just unleash the Sunset Genjutsu on Kronos and his forces. If only he was better at casting those illusions. A small noise had Naruto looking back at Talia, who blearily looked up at him with radiant blue eyes. Glowing with an after-morning romping of course. Hungry for more after a single taste of manhood. There is just something wrong with you, Artemis muttered as Aphrodite did commentary. Her lips curled up in a soft smile and she leaned up to give him a chaste kiss. She broke away and returned her head to its makeshift pillow while still meeting his eyes. Morning. Morning, Leah Chan, Naruto said just as softly, getting a snort of amusement for the pet name. Ooh, Leah Chan, huh, new pet name, Annie, when you two do it, I will destroy you with teasing. You will be so red-faced you will die, period. Talia swore to the girl sternly. Blah. Annabeth stuck her tongue out at her. He kissed her on the head and stroked her shoulder with his arm. How do you feel? Sore. Talia said. No doubt from my kid's mighty SW. Ow. The sun god cried out when a silver arrow was jammed into his arm, making him look at his glaring sister. Fine, fine, yeesh. Naruto began channeling chakra and used the soothing warmth of his body to help her relax. She gave a content sigh and her eyes fell shut. Last night was amazing. See, she loved it, Apollo said with a proud grin. Best of my life, Naruto said with a small grin. Better than the foursome, good question, Aphrodite said. One he better answer correctly. Talia mumbled, but went red once again. Ten times better than the foursome, he said with a small laugh. You're a natural. I wonder why, Hera mocked making Zeus nearly pout at his wife's words. She should be on his side. Well I wonder where I got that from. Talia asked sarcastically. Wow, you two agree on something. Jason commented as the queen and hunter huffed at that. She smiled at his laugh and sighed. We've got to go back to the camp. I don't want word getting around. Oh please. Annabeth snickered as Talia palmed her face. Everyone is going to know as soon as they see you. Yes. Yes, that representative of yours is a fragile thing, Naruto said with a chuckle as she poked him hard in the side. A representative is important, Talia said, glaring at the image. After a few more minutes of cuddling and chatting, the couple finally got out of bed and got ready to meet the day at camp. Naruto teleported them to Talia's room in cabin 1, and they quickly left the cabin, Zeus statue boring holes into Naruto's head. No, by all means. Please stay. Dad, come on, stop that. Apollo said. 
No. They were met literally two steps outside by a well-rested Annabeth. Talia. Naruto. Where have you? Doc 2. Bin. And Annabeth was the first to realize it. Leo snickered. See. I told you. Shut up. Annie. Naruto saw Annabeth staring at Talia and he groaned, knowing just what she was seeing. Talia was glowing. Something that often happened after a girl's first time, and unlike the photokinetic blonde, she couldn't dim it down. You do look pretty, Annabeth offered teasingly. I swear, Annie, one day, gray eyes narrowed for a moment before tanned cheeks gained a red hue as those wise eyes rapidly switched between himself and Talia. Busted, Hermes said with a laugh. Before the daughter of Athena could speak or quickly excuse herself, Mr. D walked past and glanced at his least favorite demigod and the child of Zeus, instantly making the connection. He made a loud groan, gaining nearby camper's eyes and said sternly. Wonderful, they're just like their fathers. Well, I'm not wrong. The wine god said as his brother and father glared at him. Well for your sake I hope that there was protection involved because I didn't agree to anything younger than five. Oh, D, you are cruel. Hermes laughed along with his brothers. I do try. He walked away before anything could be said, giving Naruto a barely noticeable smirk that had the blonde's eye twitching. That, clever bastard, Naruto said under his breath. As I've said, I do try, Nathan. A scream pierced the air and he found himself shunted aside as several of Cabin Ten's beauties surrounded Annabeth and his girlfriend. Ah, harpies, Talia, Hyper frowned at the comparison. She isn't wrong, Annabeth said, making the charm speaker pout. The whiskered son of Apollo dragged a hand down his face as he heard them interrogate Talia to the best of their abilities while she threatened them with pain, only to be brushed off. That's gutsy of them, Athena said, making Aphrodite beam. Great, just great, now he had to run damage control. The next two days sucked for the couple. Naruto was pestered by his younger curious siblings about what it was like. Aid thy siblings, Naruto. Do good among your kin. Apollo, be silent, now, Artemis said, and Leo's constant approving grins had him glaring at the shrimp with annoyance. Thumbs up, big man. The rest of Leo's cabin were cool about it, thank the gods, though Charles would occasionally tease him about it. According to Talia, she had it worse since she was practically swarmed by a group of gossip-seeking girls from any and all cabins since the camp was a gossip hotline just like Olympus nearly every moment of freedom she had. In her own words, it was hell. Why am I being tortured here? Talia whined, actually stomping her feet like a child throwing a fit. They backed down after a long silence and a harsh glare from the daughter of Zeus, but then she would be swarmed again by a different group. Smart, Athena admitted. Talia suspected it was organized. The one she suspected most of being the brains behind it was the brains of their group, Annabeth. Annie, what? I can't be curious. No, ever since Annabeth made that joke about being a godmother, Naruto asked his fuming girlfriend as they hung out in her cabin. I would ask for that. The blonde nodded. So, who's the godfather? Leo asked. Percy, Piper said and Jason snorted. I don't think Naruto would want that. Maybe me. But you're the uncle. Darn. Actually. Yes, lucky him. I'll never be an uncle now. The fly boy commented, looking at his sister, who glared. No, was all she said. She wanted this chapter over with. Now. Naruto used the back window, avoiding the statue of his grandfather as best he could. Heck, even the moon had been glaring down on him recently. He thought he and his aunt were tight. Not after what you did mister. Artemis scolded him. She sounded far too serious about it. Talia said. Ah, Annie just wants a little nephew to coddle. Naruto said, waving it off with a chuckle. I really would. Annie, stop, now. The hunter demanded sternly. He snickered as Talia gave him a dry glare. No, just, just no. She said as she sat on the couch next to him. Way too soon for kids, Aphrodite nodded, making Talia thankful, but after the war, she giggled off. Stop it. Well yeah, I know. I don't want Raijiji using the lightning bolt as an impromptu shotgun on me. Naruto said with an amused chuckle at the thought. 
Now that would be an interesting one. Hera rubbed her chin, making Zeus groan at the thought. His arm fell over Talia's shoulders as she sputtered before giving him a light smack that he snickered at. I mean, I need to wait until after Kronos is dealt with before I get married. Exactly. The love goddess nodded, even Hera agreed with that thinking. Priorities after all. Talia's cheeks lit up and she lightly shocked him, making Naruto chuckle and rub his side. So you like that plan, huh? You know she does. Nico snickered. Shut up. Whiskers. Talia said, resting her head on his chest. Her eyes drifted shut and a small smile came across her face as his thumb started to trace her shoulder. Yep. Hazel snickered. That wasn't a no, Leah Chan. Talia just gave him an amused smile before reclaiming her place. She says yes. Aphrodite squealed in glee as Talia just buried her face in her hands. Why her? Seriously, why? Couldn't someone else be the butt of the joke now, please? So after the war, what will we do? You're going to be 20 whatever. And you, you old lady will be 19. Shut up. Well, I guess I have my budding acting career to work on. Naruto said, getting a grunt from Talia. He does. Apollo nodded. Well, he's set. What are you going to do? Be a stewardess. Ha ha. Talia said dryly. Weather girl. That'd be perfect for her. Percy nodded and the hunter scowled. And you'd make a good lifeguard, fish boy. Funny. Talia said dryly as Naruto snickered. The ravenette hummed and shrugged. I don't know what I want to do with my life after this. You could always go to the hunters. Funny. Artemis said dryly as even Talia made a face at that, so not funny. Pass. True. Besides, you love me too much for that and you lost a big requirement for application. It really is a big deal, Aphrodite Mock nodded, making her rival scowl at her. Be silent, you. The Lady of Doves just stuck her tongue out at the Huntress. Naruto said with a sigh, inwardly pouting at the reason why his aunt was so mad at him. Oh, she'll forgive you, eventually. Humph. The goddess in question crossed her arms at her twin's words. Which really sucked. He liked being on his aunt's good side. Then you shouldn't have done the deed. Arte, they're teenagers. That doesn't mean anything. Could you please stop ruining the moment? Is sitting quietly and being a pillow really that hard? Talia asked, trying to get comfortable on the couch. TCH, man. Naruto's a lucky bastard, Leo said, crossing his arms. He ignored the offended look Apollo and Hera gave him. Getting a pretty girl to give it up and stay with him like that. Valdez, once this is over, I am so going to find you. And, it will not be pleasant. Trust me, sorry, Naruto said, smiling lightly at Talia letting her softer side through. He was pleased that he could get her to lower her walls. Let them tumble down, Talia. Annie, Talia cried out in sheer frustration. That sounded like sexual frustration. Nico commented and was tackled to the ground, hey. Children, Hestia said coolly, making Talia stop her attempt to pound her cousin, enough. Yes Aunt Hestia, Talia pouted as Nico looked smug, making Talia glare at him. She'd get him, all of them, later. They sat in the quiet, listening to the soft booms of the ceiling and enjoying each other's presence. Up until the door to the cabin was knocked, or rather banged on since that was the only way they could hear anything through the thick ginormous doors of cabin one, on. The couple groaned in unison and regrettably left their comfortable seats, Talia grumbling under her breath about strangulation. Man, whoever it is, is screwed, Piper said, ignoring Talia's irate look. While Naruto avoided the brief eye contact he made with the statue's eyes, he swore they crackled with electricity when he looked at them. That's right, boy, fear me. Zeus gleamed pleasingly while Apollo frowned. Talia threw the door open and a distressed Annabeth stood in front of them. Talia, Naruto, Chiron is going to burn Percy's shroud. Well, that was a depressing ending, Nico sighed, so I guess he's dead. Shame. Ha ha. Percy laughed dryly, knowing that Nico knew he was alive at the time. Still, that was a mood killer for the not-so-virgin hunter now. Leo, Jason warned but the boy waved it off. Oh, this was never going to die down. Ever. 
As he drifted back to camp Half-Blood on his magical raft, Percy thought back to who he thought of as his biggest, what if. Percy sighed while Annabeth snuggled into him more. She stayed quiet, but was happy that he had come back to her. Calypso was a great host, and he felt horrible about what he had to do. Had Hephaestus not come and told him just how much time had passed, Percy gathered he might not have bothered wondering at all when he should go back. Calypso offered a lot of good things, immortality prime among them, and he felt that they could have had something, but he had a duty to preform, one he was obligated to do. Because Percy is just too good a guy. Nico smirked, getting the boy in question to look a bit embarrassed. After all, Mr. Perfect didn't have any friends that were clear-sighted, as far as Percy knew anyway. Of course he just wants to up one Naruto. Talia rolled her eyes. So defensive for your lover. Talia glared at him. I will crisp you one day, Jackson. Just you wait. He really hoped that Naruto didn't know any clear-sighted mortals. Talk about stealing his thunder. Irony. Hades mocked, as Poseidon snickered and Zeus looked displeased. The dock of Camp Half-Blood was coming into view and Percy stood on the edge of his raft, looking at the reflective surface of the Long Island Sound before diving in, leaving his raft behind. He swam faster than the raft could have floated to the docks, not seeing the raft immediately fall into the depths of the sound. Breaking to the surface, Percy was confused at the sheer absence of people on the beach. Maybe it was lunchtime. Too late, they're all dead. Ares said with a snicker as everyone just rolled their eyes at him. So Percy went to the dining pavilion, finding no one there either. He looked around the camp, growing more and more concerned when he failed to find anyone anywhere. It made him worry that he was too late. Did his hesitation over the night keep him away another week? Or worse, did Luke attack the camp? See, fail. Yes, Ares, Hermes groaned, we get it. Now stop beating the dead horse. Hey, the sea god frowned. Sorry Poseidon, Percy would never be able to forgive himself if that were the case. He walked up to the back of the amphitheater and came across a strange sight. A beautiful blue shroud with a golden trident in the center stood in a fire pit on the amphitheater, burning slowly. Ding dong the prissy's dead. Percy just glared at his godly rival, the god just grinning back at him. Standing to the right were Chiron, Nico, Naruto, Talia and Annabeth, the last eyes filling with tears as she spoke. Sorry, Percy muttered to Annabeth, who just nodded. You came back, that's what matters. Percy Jackson was my friend, he was one of the bravest, most noble and probably the bees. Annabeth blinked and looked to the side, her eyes meeting his for a moment. Going to continue, Annie. Nah, Leo snickered, dudes cooked. Percy gave her a small sheepish wave and she gaped for a moment, the audience and the fellow speakers on stage following her gaze and joining her. Annabeth recovered and her eyes settled into a glare. Biggest idiots on the face of the earth. Accurate, said nearly everyone, making Percy pout. Jerks, all of them. Oh, harsh, I know, right. Percy stood in place as Annabeth stormed over to him and pulled him into a hug. Go Annabeth, get your man the Lady of Doves cheered. You stupid idiot, do you know how worried we were? Annabeth said, her face buried into his shoulder. I think she means I. Piper grinned, making Annabeth flush. Oh be quiet, McLean. Percy opened his mouth to speak but was forced to take a step back as Nico slammed into him, joining into the hug. Ah, thanks, Nico. Shut up, Percy. Nico scowled, looking irritated. Talia walked over, slapping her cousin upside the head. I can do that too, if you want. No, before hugging him as well. I'll take one of those. Leo said, Jason shook his head. Down boy, he scolded his friend, getting a pout from the Latino. The crowd cheered for Percy's return, save for two people. He really is kind of scrawny. Leo said, crossing his arms. Dude, Percy exclaimed while others laughed. You aren't one to talk. Piper said with a smirk. Piper. The pyro pouted as Percy looked smug. Shut up. Naruto hung back, helping Chiron put the shroud out and taking the fire pit down. He gave the wet-headed wonder a small smile as the joy died down and the campers were encouraged to walk off. Annabeth immediately followed the crowd, 
flushed red from embarrassment at one of her most vulnerable moments. We want more, Piper joked. Not going to happen. Annabeth frowned. She hated looking vulnerable. Seeing the opportunity to have a conversation with the son of Poseidon, Naruto walked forward, throwing his arm over to Leah's shoulders while Nico caught Percy up to speed on what he missed. Like Naruto's second mini-quest, his concert, your sister getting a boyfriend. Shut up, Firebug. Welcome back, Waterboy, Naruto said with a grin. Thanks, Percy said after a brief pause as he looked at the two. Sure he knew Talia and Naruto were a couple but, something seemed different now. Like they were closer somehow. They did the nasty. Apollo snickered while Artemis slapped his arm with a frown. Wanna walk and talk real quick. I gotta ask you something about Alcatraz. Naruto said, giving Talia a small peck on the cheek that had her giving him a small look. He turned and began walking away. Intrigued, Percy followed. Naruto led Percy to a secluded spot behind the fourth cabin before he turned to Percy. Blue eyes with minuscule suns in them narrowed and he glared at Percy. Someone's going to get an ass chewing. Talia snickered as Percy frowned. Great, just what he needed. Where the hell have you been? Naruto asked with a hiss. What, you decided to take a vacation? During Annabeth's first quest. Yeah, Percy. Frank, shut up. Percy glared at the son of war. No, well, it was only two days where I was. Percy said. He shook himself out of the funk and glared back. It's not like you were on the quest. What's your excuse? Foot, Hermes said, meat mouth. I was trying to save Bianca's life. Naruto said dryly and then poked Percy in the chest. And I've been making sure that my people can't find their way here. And keeping up camp morale. Okay, yes, that's important. Percy admitted, but he just didn't want Naruto on his case was all. Oh, Percy said in a small voice, but anger bubbled up in him, he didn't have to take this. Also very true. Attention everyone, Jackson finally grew some balls in this story. Ares. Well, I got blown up, so forgive me for recovering. You can't really bounce back so fast from that. Percy nodded, it hurt like hell. You splash water on yourself and boom, magically healed. Naruto said with a frown. Ah, touche, but it still took a bit to heal. And lays around with fruit drinks and a lovely chica. Percy just glared at the grinning Leo. He took note of Percy's fist clenching and Naruto arched a brow. Did I do something to piss you off? Percy's mouth started to move, but Naruto cut him off. Remember, son of the truth god. No, you didn't do anything. Percy said, his jaw clenching. Lies, Apollo declared, pointing at Percy intently, making the boy roll his eyes. Oh good, I'd hate for there to be bad air between us. Naruto said with a chipper smile. Now I don't feel as bad. Percy blinked in confusion. Feel as bad about wa oof. That, Naruto said as he shook his hand. He watched Percy cover his now shattered nose and cry out in pain. Dude, the hell. Percy gaped as Ares laughed loudly. Go for a follow up. You asshole. Percy yelled. What the hell was that for? Yes, enlighten us. Poseidon frowned while Zeus looked amused. Hades himself had a ghosting smile on his face. That was for making Annie cry. Naruto said, ah, it's cool. Big brother code. Apollo nodded at seeing the legit reason. Still, Percy argued, at least go for the gut or something. Why the nose? Looking at his hand in wonder. Huh, think I dislocated a finger from that punch. Hard nose too, must be thicker cartilage. Percy got back to his feet and stumbled for a moment. He glared as hard as he could at Naruto and, to the blonde's surprise, took a swing at him. Brawl, brawl, brawl. Ares cheered while his brothers joined him, eager to see a fight. Naruto easily danced around him, bopping him on the back of the head. Percy stumbled forward to his knees and turned back around to glare at the chuckling blonde. Easy there, skipper, Naruto said, his hands tucking into his pockets. You're a few years too late to get me with a simple punch. Now I enacted my brotherly right, just go stick your face in the lake or something. You'll be good as new. Ass. Percy muttered with a frown and Hestia frowned at him in return. Man, 
Why did she have to have super hearing for cursing? Percy glared at him before getting up to his feet and walking off to get some bottled water for his nose. Naruto watched him walk off, frowning at the hostility Percy was giving him. What happened to the son of Poseidon? Well, aside from getting decked in the schnoz, Percy clicked his tongue to make him feel that way. Jealousy. Naruto arched a brow at Helios musing. Jealous of what? We can only wonder. Hazel Mock sighed as the blonde and her boyfriend looked embarrassed. How the hell am I supposed to know? I'm just speculating off what you know. Poseidon was a jealous guy back in the day, easy to anger too. Maybe his kid's just as hot-tempered as he was. I see it, Hades said, making his middle brother brood while the rest of their siblings gave small laughs in agreement. Percy's not hot-headed. Thick-skulled, maybe, but not hot-headed. Naruto said in Percy's defense. Ah, he does care. Nico joked. Then I don't know what to tell ya, kid. He's a teenager. Teenagers get pissed for all sorts of stupid reasons. Like love. The love goddess giggled. Amen to that, Naruto said with a snort as he walked off into the camp. He saw Annabeth happily conversing with Talia and a grin crossed his face. At least she wasn't moping anymore. I wasn't moping, Annabeth pouted. Sewer, Annie, Talia nodded. I wasn't. The blonde whined. You want to go back into the labyrinth? Naruto arched a brow as he sat next to Talia on the couch in the big house. Naruto and Talia were discussing the relationship with Camp Jupiter with Chiron. Yeah, the Romans cheered. Boo. Athena frowned, getting eye rolls from her fellow gods. When Percy, nose healed thanks to some water, barged in with Annabeth behind him. Their conversation came to a halt, but their interest was piqued when it came to the labyrinth. Apparently, their quest was still ongoing since they hadn't found Daedalus. Athena sighed at the mention of her most promising son, wondering where she went wrong. Yes, before I came back, Hephaestus came and found me. He told me what Hera meant by, you already have a way through. Percy said, clear-sighted mortals can navigate it. Wasn't that hard to figure out. Hera said, taking a smug glance at Annabeth, who glared right back at her. Ariadne was clear-sighted, Annabeth said, making the connection. Her lips pursed as her mind continued to move at kilometers a second. Naruto arched a brow at the action, wondering what was going on in her head. Well, just ideas, Rachel Elizabeth Dare. Talia said with amused look. Really, just getting prepped for what's to come is all, Annie. And Harriet Tubman, who was a daughter of Hermes, used a lot of clear-sighted mortals to help her with her underground railroad. Chiron said, you could use the help, Annabeth. I suppose, Annabeth said with a pout. Exactly, so we need a clear-sighted mortal to get through. Percy said, wish I could say I know just the guy or girl but I don't know anyone. Naruto said, huh, there's a shocker. Jason said, Naruto seemed on the ball for most things. Well I do, Percy said, sounding pleased at that. So petty, Peter, Mr. D commented, forgive me, Mr. D. Percy said in a bored tone, not being serious at all. A glance at Annabeth showed that she was frowning, making Naruto blink in confusion. She knew something he didn't, which wasn't all that surprising, but for some reason that something upset her. Wow, you were so bad for him, Annabeth. Piper said with an amused look. Okay, I get it. Enough. Tease to Leah or something. No, the last chapter was for me, this is your time, Annie. The grinning hunter said. Once more, Percy snapped Naruto's attention back to him. I know just the girl. I just need a phone. You'll need a car to get there, too. Naruto said, crossing his arms. Compared to Argus, I'm ten times the driver, no offense big guy. Argus simply shrugged. A day off for him. No problem. Lazy. Ares snickered, making Hera frown at her son's words. Fine, Percy said. Road trip, Talia said with a smirk, making Naruto chuckle. It seemed they were glued to his car this summer. Because it's awesome, Leo whined. He so wanted that car now. Isn't your mom clear sighted? Annabeth asked. Couldn't we ask her? I'd rather she would not go. Poseidon said with a frown, Percy nodding in agreement. 
Annabeth just grumbled. Percy shook his head as the group of four walked through Times Square, looking out for the girl he said was named Rachel Elizabeth Dare. Naruto and Talia walked behind the two, Talia's hand fingering her pocketed mace canister while Naruto flipped his flashlight in his hand. He was enjoying the sights, eyeballing the coke sign and a shadow watched from the top. I spy, a ninja, Hermes declared before cupping his chin. Or a monster, hard to see from this angle. Your mom's clear-sighted, Talia asked, taking Naruto's attention off the shadow. He looked back and it was gone, making him tense and stopped flipping his disguised sword. Ninja, Apollo nodded. Yes she is, but no we're not asking my mom to go through the labyrinth. Percy said with a pointed look to Annabeth. Annabeth just pouted, making the two older demigods smirk. They could tell that Annabeth did not want to talk to this girl, whoever she was. So transparent, shut it, Burger Queen. Annie, don't bring the burgers into this. The hunter frowned. Humph. They could also tell that she was jealous, which Talia could understand. She had to deal with Reyna, after all. At least this way she got some entertainment out of it. You are all kinds of terrible. Meh, you still love me. Talia waved off the mock glare she got from her best friend. Naruto, on the other hand, thought her jealous pout was adorable. It really is. Percy, so where is the mystery girl, Jackson? Naruto asked, grinning at Annabeth's mild glare. Oh this was going to be fun. Marriott Marquis, Percy said pointing at the hotel in question as they crossed. A car angrily honked at them as it tried to make a right and Naruto turned to glare at it. I'm walking here, he said in his best Brooklyn accent, making Talia snort in amusement. The demigod snickered at that along with Apollo and Hermes. Ah, New York traffic, Ares said with a fond tone. They approached the human statue standing in front of it. There were six in total, but one was a rather pretty girl covered in gold paint from head to toe. Naruto and Talia shared a look, guessing she was the one Percy was talking about since he was looking at her specifically. Like Midas all over again. Jason groaned, at least that wasn't going to happen this time. Shrugging it off, Naruto fished into his pocket and dropped a 20 into the donation tarp. Painting their whole body for donations and standing still for hours on end. That's dedication and that earns a 20. Come on, give a 50. Apollo said, supporting the arts. We could push her over. Annabeth said, making Naruto shake his head. Wow, cruel, Annabeth. Hazel, don't be mean, Annie. He said, chiding the girl. A few minutes later, a kid in silver came over from the hotel's taxi spot. He took a pose next to the girl in gold, like he was about to lecture the crowd and the girl blinked before hopping off the tarp. She gave Percy a grin. Thanks for waiting, Percy. Nice timing, too. Wanna get some coffee? Oh, coffee date? No. Annabeth frowned at the love goddess words. She led them over to a coffee stand called Java Moose, where Percy and Annabeth got fruit smoothies while the girl ordered an espresso extreme. Naruto began to order when Talia cut him off. We'll each have a bottle of water. Walk him on, Talia, that's no. No coffee, Talia said with a pointed glare. I feel your pain, bro. Leo nodded, glaring at his two friends. No, Jason and Piper said, the boy did not need coffee. Ever. Naruto sadly took his bottled water and paid the girl standing behind the counter. They left the stand and went over to the table where Percy, Annabeth and the girl were sitting. Naruto pulled a chair over next to Annabeth and Talia taking the last seat next to him. Annabelle, right? The girl asked. I am loving this. Piper grinned, eager to see it since Rachel had told her a few things about how she and Annabeth had met. Annabeth, the daughter of Athena corrected sternly. Sorry, name's Rachel Elizabeth Dare, she said to the two older demigods. Her eyes lingered on Naruto for a second. Hey, you're the guy that slapped Percy upside the head at the Hoover Dam. Of course she'd remember that. Percy palmed his face. Someone's got to, Naruto said with a shrug. Naruto Uzumaki. You're hot, Rachel said bluntly. Percy gaped at that while Annabeth blinked in surprise. Wow, blunt, Piper whistled. Well, now that you think about it. Aphrodite tittered off. Nah, 
Apollo waved off. We have Reina for the role of the rival. This is true. She was leveled with a glare from both Annabeth and Talia while Percy groaned and Naruto blinked. Thank you, he said in return. He's taken, Talia said swiftly, glaring at the girl. Talia Grace, his girlfriend. Defensive much, Talia, stuff it, Annie, I'll get my payback in a bit. Just you wait and see. There's nothing wrong with window shopping, Rachel said, ignoring the warnings Talia was giving her. Ooh, that was good. Hazel whistled, slick, I always did like her. Aphrodite nodded, but soon pouted, but now she can't romance, boo. Part of the job, dite. Apollo shrugged, meh, what could you do? Naruto snickered, getting a glare from Talia. So are all of you like Percy. Some of us are smarter, some are stronger, gotta be a bit more specific. Naruto said, getting a dull glare from Percy. She did open that door. Hermes nodded. You're all demigods, right? Rachel asked, amused. Not so loud. Annabeth hissed. Announce it to the world why don't you? Okay. Rachel said. She got to her feet and cupped her mouth. Hey everybody. These four are living evidence that the Greek gods exist. They've got godly blood running through their veins. I love her. Leo smirked, but pouted. Damn it, everyone is so out of my reach. Piper patted his shoulder in comfort. There. There, Leo. The people walking by either gave her a brief glance or ignored her outright. Got to love New York ignorance. Apollo smiled brightly as the demigods were trying to control their snickers from Rachel's antics. Annabeth kept glaring at the girl while Naruto broke into snickers, holding his sides while Rachel sat down. They don't seem to care. Oh man, Naruto said, holding his gut. That was priceless. Dot the look on your faces. Naruto, this is serious. What if someone believed her? Annabeth asked. Annabeth, we, he said, gesturing to himself and to Leah, can make sure that the mist clouds their minds. Annabeth blushed a bit for forgetting that fact and pouted at her brother for pointing that out. She just wants to get one over on Rachel. Piper, Annabeth groaned. Stop picking on me. Never, to Leah said with a grin. Percy looked at Rachel, listen, we need your help. Okay, Rachel shrugged, I helped with that band room thing. Sorry, I hope they didn't kick you out. Percy said, nah, they asked a lot of questions about you, though. I played dumb. Was it hard? Annabeth asked, woo. Leo whistled, cold as ice, girl. He said, making Annabeth grumble a bit, looking embarrassed. Annabeth. Naruto said sternly while Talia chuckled. He gave his girlfriend a look and she smirked at him. Can we please just stay calm and talk? Percy asked. Yeah, Annie, stay calm now. Talia, I am calm. Rachel said, what's to be nervous about? The labyrinth, Naruto said, with added wiggling finger effect. Best spooky effect ever. Ares snorted. Please, bucket of blood beats that every time. Bah, what do you know? Apollo argued. Rachel quirked a smile at that before turning to Percy as he explained everything that happened in the past few days. Rachel took it all in stride, occasionally asking what one place was like or inquiring about more detail. So where were you two? Rachel asked Talia and Naruto. Well, no, Apollo. Artemis said to her smirking twin. Secret world hidden in Antarctica, which happens to be where I'm from. Naruto said. Rachel blinked at him and he lifted his hand up, making a Rasengan that had her green eyes glued to it. Annabeth gave him a pout. I wanna go. Group vacay. Leo cheered, grinning as Piper smirked. She knew her other would like to go back there again, even with all the ninjas. We'll talk about it later, Annie. Naruto said as he let the technique dissipate. So what do you say, Red? You need my help, Rachel asked, looking at Annabeth. Okay. Annabeth frowned, she's enjoying this. Annabeth stirred her fruit smoothie. Yeah, she sounded sullen as she said it. Maybe. Submission. Ares laughed and Athena glared at him. Yes, Percy said. You can see through the mist, like Ariadne. So you want me to lead you through a place I've never been? Rachel asked. Based on a guess. An educated guess, Percy said. I'm betting you'll be able to avoid being tricked by the mist. She already did, 
Naruto said, getting their attention. I used the mist to make the Rasengan look like a baseball. She saw through it. Perfect test, Athena admitted. Good for her, Annabeth said with a huff while Percy looked pleased that his guess was right. I want to make a joke here, Talia said. But, well, you're sort of a joke on your own so that would be cruel of me. Thank you, Percy said, bewildered. You're welcome, the hunter nodded, her good deed of the day done. She looked at Rachel. It'll be dangerous. Very, very dangerous. I could die. Yes. Rachel turned to Percy. I thought you said monsters won't hurt mortals. That sword you have. Doesn't mean much in this case. Nico said. Celestial bronze doesn't hurt mortals. And monsters normally don't either. But Luke. Percy paused in thought. He doesn't care. He'll use mortals, monsters, anything to get what he wants. He'll kill anyone that gets in his way. True. The little asshat. Ares. Hermes glared but the war god just laughed. Talia and Naruto gained dark looks at that while Annabeth gave Percy a small glare. At least Naruto and Talia know what to think. Apollo said. Hermes glaring at him. What? The sun god shrugged. No offense Herm, but we lost kids just because yours had a chip on his shoulder. The messenger god slumped at that. Sounds like a nice guy. Rachel said. He's under the influence of a titan. Annabeth said in the son of Hermes' defense. He's being manipulated. Sewer. Ares mocked his niece, really manipulated like. Annabeth scowled at her uncle. Rachel looked between Percy and Annabeth before nodding. Okay, I'm in. Really? Percy asked, blinking. Are you sure? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Percy. Naruto said, getting a mild look of annoyance from the boy. For the saying no doubt. Poseidon said, so what do I have to do? Rachel asked, pulling a blue plastic hairbrush out of her bag and brushing out the gold in her hair to reveal a vibrant red. Percy shivered at Rachel's weapon of choice. You need to find an entrance to the labyrinth. There's one at Camp Half-Blood, but that's off limits to mortals. Annabeth said, somehow making mortals sound like a disease. Naruto gave her a pointed look that had her looking into her drink. Heal, Ares said but was smacked on the head by Athena, ow. Bitch. Shut up and take it, pig. The wisdom goddess sniffed, it was what he deserved. What am I looking for? Rachel asked, the symbol of Daedalus. Percy said, it's anything with a Greek delta on it. This, Rachel asked, drawing the delta with her straw. Yes, where do you see it? Talia asked, eyes narrowing. In the Marriott's basement, where we keep our costumes. Rachel said. Coincidence. Frank asked. I guess so. Hazel shrugged. She grunted. First I have to change though. That is one old door. Naruto said, looking at the rusted old entryway. I tried to open it. Rachel said. I couldn't. It's rusted shut. That's because you're not a demigod. Annabeth said as she stepped forward. You can just feel the smugness ooze from the pages. Leo. She put her hand on the door and it gained a bright blue light before it started to creak and groan as it opened. Naruto covered his ears, groaning in agony as he fell to a knee. Behind him, a shadow did the same. Talia put a hand on his shoulder and gave him a concerned look that he waved off. Got better ears than normal humans. Chakra circulates through them constantly like the rest of my body. It's why I can take so much damage. Ah, super hearing how you backfire. Apollo bowed his head, Artemis nodding with him. It had happened to her a few times. So, you get it from your mom? Talia asked, making Naruto nod as the creaking stopped and he got to his feet. Yeah, he said. There was a small noise that had Naruto looking behind him, eyes narrowed in suspicion. Ninjas, always hiding in the shadows. Hazel said and looked to her brother, how goes that ninja training, Nico? Shut up. He glared at her. Honestly, he tried it one time and she just pokes fun at him for it. The blonde looked forward again, taking up the rear with Talia as Rachel led the way down the stairs that were hidden behind the door. They stopped at the bottom of the stairs, Percy and Annabeth turning their flashlights on as they entered a pitch black tunnel. Rachel yelped as the beams of light landed on a grinning skull. It was attached to a giant skeleton, formed in an X over the tunnel entrance. Well, I think it's safe to say that isn't Tyson. 
Naruto said, unknowingly relieving Percy. It's not big enough, Percy said, nodding. He channeled chakra into his hand and willed light into his arm as he used it like a makeshift torch. Save the batteries, guys. Ah, light, Leo grinned, tongues of fire licking his fingertips. Naruto, how'd you do that? Annabeth asked after shutting her flashlight off. Practice, Naruto said, when? Talia asked, giving him a look. At night, come on, Leah Chan, that much is obvious. He yelped from the smack upside the head he got. For being a smartass, Talia muttered under her breath. But your nights are occupied now, aren't they? Annabeth asked, jokingly. Damn it, suffer. Annabeth smiled in glee despite the glare her friend gave her. She got a glare from Talia, whose cheeks were now red, and Naruto scratched the back of his neck with his glowing hand. Rachel snickered while Percy furrowed his brows. What's so funny? He asked. Ah, dense Percy. Refreshing, isn't it? Shut up, Nico. Nothing. Seaweed brain, Annabeth said, smirking despite the glare Talia was giving her. Damn right there isn't anything funny. Talia said with a grumble. Oh once Annie had her own boyfriend, the teasing hell that would come in the form of Talia Grace would be ruthless. And unforgiving. Like how I am going to be with you and Rachel, Annie. Annabeth frowned at that, cursing the fact that Talia was going to have ammo with the coming events. They continued on, Naruto's glowing hand making a rather bright light to walk with. Rachel turned to Percy. So, who's Tyson? My half-brother, Percy said. He's a cyclops. And telling a mortal girl that isn't weird at all. Apollo said. Your half-brother? Yeah. Hopefully we find him and my friend Grover. He's a satyr. Again, not totally weird. Oh, well, I guess we should be moving on then. Rachel said, leading them onward until they came to a three-way intersection. On the left was a forested-looking path while the right looked older than the path straight ahead. Isn't this where Hecate usually shows up? Apollo asked jokingly, getting a few snorts from the gods while Talia frowned ever so slightly. Well, isn't this interesting? Naruto said, making two clones. He sent both down the two side tunnels. Those stones are the oldest, we should go that way. Annabeth said, it could take us to Daedalus' workshop. Tyson and Grover took a path like that. Percy said, looking to the forested tunnel. We need to go straight. Rachel said, her eyes were looking ahead at the floor. Go with the mortal, Demeter said. That's, that's the most illogical choice though. Annabeth said, thank you for your analysis, Mr. Spock. Talia said, smirking at the glare Annabeth gave her. Stupid Star Trek, Leo grumbled. Those leaves look like feelers, Rachel said. And that's not creepy, Frank said, looking a tad green. Naruto winced as his clone was dispelled. His hand went to his head. Ow. Let's not go that way, or the other way. Ow. Because there's a spike trap that way. Rachel said. She looked back down to the muddy brick. There's like a faint golden path on the ground. I think it's our safest bet. Follow the yellow brick road. Naruto mumbled. Ooh. Follow the. No. Artemis frowned. Ah. Come on. Apollo begged. No more singing. Spoil sport. The sun god pouted. Getting elbowed in the side by Delia. Ow. Yeah and there's no traps up ahead as far as I can see. Rachel said amused by Naruto's comment. Then that's the way we go. Percy said, not getting killed by a trap sounded like a great idea to him. You trust her? Annabeth asked. Annabeth, even her mother was frowning ever so slightly now, making the girl in question pout. Yeah, he sounded very sure of himself, getting a light smile from Rachel for the faith. Annabeth opened her mouth to argue, but thought better of it and just went with Percy's decision. She still looked rather peeved as she waved Rachel on. They continued to walk, and minutes turned into an hour. Still no sign of a trap. However, occasionally, Naruto would stop and look behind them, peering into the darkness with two sun ring pupils. Talia, who often would forcibly turn him around, urged him on despite his paranoia. Ninja paranoia is good, Hermes said. That's their shtick, it keeps them alive. Their shadow followed silently mimicking a lizard as it followed the group of five. Is it always this easy? 
Rachel asked. And now Murphy will fix that. Piper said with a deadpan look on her face. If it had always been this easy, we would have never come to you. Talia said. And that worries me, Percy said. Naruto nodded in agreement. Aside from their current shadow, that he was sure was following him, there was this feeling in the air. To put it in the proper terms, Naruto's spider sense was tingling. Hey, copyright, Apollo frowned, his kid or not, no stealing from your half-brother. So, where are you from? Annabeth asked, though it sounded as if she was asking if Rachel was from another world. She's certainly alien enough when I first met her, Annabeth said. Annabeth, come on, her boyfriend said, I'm just saying, is all. Brooklyn, Rachel said simply, and your parents, they're both human, well duh. Dionysus rolled his eyes. I meant won't they be worried about you. I've been gone a week once and they hadn't noticed it. I'm sure a day or two in a labyrinth won't change that. Funny thing about that, Annabeth trailed off. Time is real screwy in there. Annabeth added for her other. As the sound of a metal door creaking open was heard. What was that? Iron hinges, Rachel guessed. I meant literally, what is making that sound? Nothing good, Naruto said dimming the light down to a light glow. Run, Percy asked as the ground started to rumble. Run, Rachel agreed. The group turned tail and retreated, not making it even twenty feet until they ran into one familiar face and four strangers. Three Dracine stood with them, one of the monstrous women holding a masked man with gravity-defying white hair within one of her legs. His headband was lifted up and the Sharingan was staring Naruto in the face. There's Kakashi. Hermes pointed like he was spotting Waldo. Hello again, Percy. The African-American girl standing beside the Dracine said smugly. And Rachel, welcome into the fold. Kelly, Rachel said with a nod. She's really casual about this. Jason pointed out. Meh, she's seen her before from the band room incident. Percy told him. Hey Kakashi, Naruto said with a wave. The man's eyes closed merrily. Naruto. What in the world are you doing here? Here I was spelunking on my vacation and look what I found, the perfect woman for Orochimaru. He is just so chill. Hermes grinned, how could you not love the guy? I know right, Naruto said with a chuckle while the Dracine hissed in anger at the man in her grasp. Kelly turned her attention to Naruto. So you are the heir of Helios, hmm. What? She wants to shake up with him too? Piper asked curiously. No. Percy said, knowing what was going to happen. Naruto grinned and reached into his pocket. Yep, and you are. Kelly, I'm a empasa. Might want to have a doctor check that out. Naruto said, he couldn't help himself. No thanks. Apollo said to the amused looks he got. He got a look from the ancient vampiric monster before she smirked. You truly are his heir. Lady Hecate has special orders for you not to be killed, nothing about being captured though. Kelly hummed for a moment. She'd probably enjoy it, actually. Kinky. Leo. Shouted all his friends. Bitch. Talia grumbled, whipping her mace canister out and pressing the button on top of it. Damn right. Talia said in agreement with her other. Before her spear, or Percy's now uncapped sword, could finish forming, Kelly moved and wrapped her hand around Rachel's neck, her hands going to the monster's wrist instinctively. Kelly smirked and held a clawed hand up to Rachel's cheek. Ah, the classic hostage situation. Ares smiled, he loved the classics. Move and I slice her up. I suggest you lower your weapons. You're bluffing, Annabeth said. Really, a monster bluffing, Piper said, making Annabeth go pink. Wishful thinking, more like bravado, Hera commented. She's not, Percy said, it's not nice to use mortal shields. Naruto said chittingly. You can just see him wagging his finger. Poseidon smirked. I don't care, Kelly said, her finger dragging across Rachel's cheek and making a light cut. I'll say it again, lower your weapons. Percy and Annabeth shared a look while Talia glared at the monster. Ah, you got me, Naruto said, sighing as he held his hands up. I surrender. Say what? The audience said in surprise. What? Naruto. Whiskers. Yes. Naruto asked with an innocent blink. The hell? The three of them asked. Yeah, we're in the same boat. 
Percy said, looking shocked at the fast surrender. What? They've got hostages and if Kakashi is caught, then there's no way I can escape. Naruto said with a shrug. A Dracine ski walked up behind him, grabbing his arms and forcing them behind him. Ow. Hey, watch it with the kinky stuff. I'm not that used to it yet. Talia went red at that while everyone gave a snicker at her expense. Oh shut up. Kelly smirked as he was bound and looked expectantly at the other three. Talia glared at her before she tossed her spear down, Percy and Annabeth following her example. The other Dracine collected the weapons with a laugh while Kelly stroked Rachel's cheek, watching the demigods get bound before she did the same to the mortal. So just out of curiosity, Kakashi started. Why am I being held like this and not bound like them? So Sylvia like as you, the Dracine holding him said. You will be Cecilvius offering to the host. I fell nothing but pity for my student. Apollo grimaced. Oh, goody, I'm special, super special. Leo nodded. Kakashi sensei, word of advice. If you get groped a little, just take it in stride. Speaking from experience here, monster gropes are strange. The gods nodded, getting some strange looks from everyone else. Ah, the woes of being devilishly handsome. This reminds me of that one male stripper mission I had to do. Ooh, Aphrodite said, her interest piqued. Only your student, Artemis deadpan to her brother, who was grinning. Duh, unfortunately, I think this is going to end just like that mission did. Kicking ass and taking names. Waking up in a hospital after a month went by. Ouch, the men winced. The horror, little traitor. Apollo mumbled with a frown while his twin smirked. They were led into two bronze doors guarded by a giant with red eyes and drooling fangs. The door was opened and as they passed through, Naruto made a face at it. It made a grab for him but was stopped by a savage slice from Kelly. Have to protect her mistress' goods. Hades nodded with a joking grin, making Apollo glare at him. Ah, it was nice to know that even while on opposite sides, Naruto was saved by his past life's yearning lover. Things are funny like that. Jason nodded, like it was an everyday thing. And while that irked Talia, it entertained the hell out of him. Jerk, Talia pouted. He, Percy and Kakashi were separated from the girls, the three of them being taken to the host as prisoner observers. Yay, Annabeth and Talia cheered in bored tones. The three were led to the gates of an arena, where they got to see a centaur killed brutally. Can we get more detail? No, Ares. Hera told him sternly. Ah, Naruto bowed his head and prayed for the creature's soul before looking up as the gates were opened. He and Kakashi were pushed through the gates, Percy being held back by the Dracine hissing tauntingly at him. Hiss hiss hiss. Hey, Apollo frowned. That's not funny. He told his fiery nephew. Hermes snorted. No, it is funny. He corrected his brother. Their binds were cut and then he saw him. Naruto's blood ran hot. His fists clenched tightly and the ground beneath his feet was slowly heating up if the steam was anything to go by. Golden suns turned red as they stared at the cold blue orbs belonging to his one-time friend. Now bitch crying traitor, will you ever shut up about it, Ares? The war god snorted, no, it's too much fun to not poke that one. Ass, Hermes said, I try, speed stick, Luke. He couldn't describe how made he was. Dot nor how he felt about the Dot the. How's psychopath? Murderer's a good one. Bastard isn't bad, but a bit insulting. Ooh. Here's a very accurate word. Traitor. Well put. Helios. Ares nodded smugly while Hermes looked betrayed. That'll do nicely. Naruto said under his breath. He listened to Luke barter with the giant son of Poseidon and Gaia, Antaeus. It was odd hearing praise from the guy that tried to kill you not too long ago. Meh. You get used to it. Percy waved off. What's that Naruto? Just talking to myself, Kakashi sensei. Naruto said. Surely the heir of Helios will entertain you, Lord Antaeus. Luke said, his silver tongue being put to good use. He's got some brown on the tip of his nose. Nico helpfully pointed out. Nico. Annabeth frowned, but the boy just shrugged it off. He didn't care. Luke was an ass in his opinion, redemption or not. He is good with both a bow and a sword, and comes from a land where magic is within all. Yes, an heir of a titan, 
my father's cousin. He will die well in this temple, Antaeus said with a gleeful smile. Just had to shack up with grandmother, didn't you Poseidon? Hades smirked, getting his brother to simmer. Yes, yes, yes. The sea god played it cool, trying to hide his grimace of one of his, less favorable sons. What of the other one? A comrade, two for the price of one, Luke said. Two on two should be entertaining, should it not? Ah, yes, send two more combatants in. I like the sound of this team fighting. Tag team. The boys cheered, high fives all around as the girls rolled their eyes. Boys, great, Naruto said dryly, we're gladiators. I'll go easy on you. I don't think we're fighting each other, sensei. The gates opened and two Dracine skated out, armed to the teeth with a shield and a spear in their hands. They glared at the two shinobi, who shared a look of boredom. And, Apollo drawled out. Before Antaeus could begin the fight, Kakashi and Naruto had their signature attacks in hand, Kakashi's left hand was encased in lightning, crackling off it just as Zeus bolts did from the sky. Zeus bristled at that, I'm so stealing that, Talia said, that looked awesome, just like the rosin thing. Naruto's hand held a small ball of fire that burned more intensely than the chariot of Apollo. Well, hell was the original, Apollo trailed off, feeling his ego bruised a bit. They rushed forward, crossing each other's paths twice over before jumping up and shoving their attacks into the Dracine, faces. Soon after, the two monsters were dissolving, leaving behind a boot of snakeskin each. Done, the sun god said, that was so fast, even I have pity for them. Ares frowned, it wasn't even fun. Epic, sure, entertaining, hell no. Naruto grinned and snatched the two, not that Kakashi would know what to do with them. He put them in a seal before Antaeus recovered from his shock, which swiftly became anger. Much like his father, oh go play the xylophone with your skeletons. Poseidon told the amused Hades. I did not say begin, Antaeus said, standing from his seat in all his sumo-like fury. He looks like an Akamaiki, doesn't he? Kakashi asked. Ah, that's an insult to Choji's family, Naruto said, waving it off. He looked up at the infuriated giant. Come on, give me a real challenge. I'm the son of Apollo, heir of Helios. I'm literally a walking firebomb waiting to explode. Yeah, get him pumped up. Ares nodded, maybe we'll see something good. He grinned. Antaeus glared at him before sitting back down and nodding. True, their deaths were magnificent. This time wait for me to start and end the fight. I thought he was Greek. Jason questioned. That sounded way too much like the Colosseum. You know, a Roman idea. Sorry, we got trigger happy. Naruto said with a shrug. Apollo nodded, that why my kids don't use guns. Might blow their load, yep, pigs. Artemis scrunched as Apollo and Ares snickered. Antaeus gave him a terrifying grin and he turned to address the audience. Now, I give my fine guests and my father the Earthshaker a true treat. Release the Indus worms. The what? The demigods, besides Annabeth, asked. Oh boy, the blonde child of wisdom grimaced along with the gods. Poseidon just palmed his face. The what? Naruto and Kakashi asked, both not liking the sound of that. What are those? Talia asked. Giant man-eating worms from India. Annabeth said under her breath. They should be able to fight them. Oh. Piper nodded. Good. I think. The confidence you have in your brother, Annabeth. Apollo chided her, looking disapproving. Real reassuring there, Annabeth. I don't remember asking you, golden girl. You can just feel the tension. Hazel commented amusingly. Stop talking. Kelly snapped, her eyes going back to the fight. I must watch in order to intervene if necessary. Hecate doesn't like her playmates bruised. Aphrodite commented. Unless she's doing it. Apollo grinned ignoring the green that tinged the demigod's cheeks. Talia snorted, you won't need to, I hope not, standing orders and all. Naruto and Kakashi settled back to back as the ground shifted and cracked before from beneath broke four large tree-like, things. They were about twelve feet in length, perhaps six or seven feet wide. Circular mouths with lines of sharp teeth opened as they roared, surrounding the two shinobi. Naruto grunted in annoyance. Graboid's influence, 
Great, he said. Love that movie. Leo gushed, grinning. What influence? Kakashi asked. Tremors. Pretty fun sci-fi movie. Has Kevin Bacon in it? If we live, which we probably will, I'll show it to you. Does it have an Ika scene? I hate him already, Artemis said with a glower. Sensei, my aunt would hate you. You tell him, nephew. Now, now, that's not a nice thing to say, Naruto. She's got the moniker of, a mortal man hater. Ma, so negative. He has your laid back behavior. The huntress snorted, getting a beaming grin from Apollo. Good, Chiron never got that so it was good one of his students got it. Begin, Antaeus said over the roar of the crowd. The monsters roared before diving forward, their attempted group attack was avoided as the two shinobi jumped up and landed a few feet away, back to back as the tails of the worms disappeared under the earth. The ground started to circle around them and they stood completely still, tense and ready to move. Like sharks waiting for the kill. Good analogy, Poseidon told his legacy. Well, this is fun, Kakashi said unsheathing his sword as well as a kunai, holding both at the ready. Any ideas? They've got to have a weakness. Naruto said as he flicked his flashlight's switch, eclipse unfolding out and gleaming readily. It's like a godly law or something. Even the playing field. Be thankful now. Dionysus commented with a sip of his diet coke. Yes well, this seems fair. Kakashi said, worms circling us like we're dinner. I never said it was fair just saying it was an even playing field. Naruto said, his right hand flipping through signs that Kakashi saw through his peripheral vision. The Anbu smirked beneath his mask and put the kunai to use, throwing it a bit away. It struck the ground and a part of the circling ground split off, going to investigate it. Naruto and Kakashi exchanged a look before Naruto grinned. Let's turn this field into our favor. Their counter-attack starts here. Annabeth grinned eager to see what Naruto would do. After you, Naruto spun Eclipse around in his grip, bringing his hands together in his signature hand sign, grinning as they were surrounded by several clones. The clones immediately left the two shinobi while the monstrous crowd roared in approval. Antaeus cheered loudly, approving of more sacrifices for his father. How many more until you are sated, Poseidon? Hades, Hestia warned as Poseidon was in true brooding mode now. Honestly, why did they have to gang up on him? They had their own shaming children, too. The worms followed the clones, leaving Kakashi and Naruto to plan secretly and safely, even if it looked like they were just standing there lazily. Ninjas. Leo shook his head, sneaky as hell. A clone attacked with a kunai, failing to cut the worm's hide and being eaten by the worm. That was an unpleasant, Naruto said, rubbing his forehead. Learn anything. Their teeth hurt, like, a lot. Well, you learn something new every day, Percy said, rubbing his chin in thought. Well, that's progress I suppose. I don't see you doing anything, Mr. Reikiri. I have to conserve chakra, I don't have an endless ocean of it like someone else I know. Zing, excuses. Yeah, your father taught me well. Ooh, Apollo grinned, half-truths, right, exactly. I teach Saddam well. Apollo complimented himself. Artemis shook her head, could his head get any bigger? Fight and die, fight and die, fight and die, the crowd chanted. I'd like to see you guys come down here and do that. Naruto yelled back. Yeah, bunch of pansies. Ares sneered, honestly, get in there too. Have a massive battle, gore everywhere. He chuckled darkly. He looked at Kakashi and arched a brow. Am I going to have to do everything? You are the demigod, Naruto. So that means we do all the work. You can make lightning with your hand, use it. Talia scowled. You've really gotten protective over Naruto, Talia. Annie, I swear, just shut it. Nah, this is to get my jokes in when you decided to mess with me more about Rachel in the coming events. Touche, you're lazier than Shikamaru. It's not being lazy. Kakashi closed his eyes and gave a thumbs up. It's strategizing. No it is not, Athena said, glowering while her brother snickered. Yeah, for me to do all the work, you lazy excuse of a sensei. Ex-sensei, semantics, pretty much, Apollo nodded in agreement. Naruto said, jumping into the fray and bringing Eclipse up as a worm broke from the underground, 
mouth poised to catch him and swallow him whole. He landed on top of the worm's head and drove his sword into it. There was a shriek of pain before Naruto twisted and pulled the blade out, the worm reared back and fell forward. It dissolved into golden dust, electing the attention of the other worms. Uh oh. Naruto grabbed the vial of oil left behind and tucked it away into his pouch. That's some good stuff, Hephaestus said, really cleaned the countertop. His clones ganged on one of the other worms before it could dive underground, attacking it with Rasengans as it dived on them, causing them to sacrifice themselves. The blonde ninja ran away as the other two followed him, one jumping out of the ground with its mouths open to eat him. He avoided with a small evasive jump, turning to slice the other leaping out right down the middle. It exploded into golden dust, leaving behind the strong smell of sulfur and a vial that hit him in the head. Ow! When spoils attack, Apollo declared in a deep voice. Naruto picked it up off the ground as the last worm shot up behind him. He turned around and looked up at the drooling worm. Clearing his throat, Naruto pointed at the worm with his sword. You're one ugly motherfucker. Oh yeah he is. Everyone nodded, but Hestia frowned at the language. The worm shrieked in anger and Naruto grinned. Bad call, because I know the one man who can cut lightning in half. Doubt it, the god of lightning said with a huff. He's just waiting for the signal. Antaeus laughed and thrust his hand out in the thumbs down position, which Kakashi took as his cue, his hand being engulfed in lightning and his left eye's Sharingan spun rapidly. He should get that pink eye checked out, Hermes said to his brother. If my other gets a chance, he shrugged. Reikiri, lightning cutter. Blasphemy, Zeus said, outraged. Well actually there's this legend in Japanese culture about a samurai who, I'll be quiet. Apollo said, shutting his mouth after the glare he got from his father. He cried as he rushed forward and cut through the worm's hide, grabbing the insides and electrocuting the worm to its demise. The worm dissolved into golden dust, leaving a final vial of oil that Naruto picked up. He and Kakashi turned the blonde raising his sword to the sky. I give upon the lord of the sea this gift of Indus oil. Naruto said, the oil vanishing in a flash of light. Well, that was nice of him. Thanks, squid god. Hey, Poseidon warned with a frown. The ground trembled a bit and Naruto smirked. Ah, it was good to get the last word in. Little, the sea god muttered to himself. Well, hopefully we see my fight next. Percy commented since he didn't get his moment of awesome this chapter. I'm sure you will, Percy. Annabeth smiled at him. Ow. Hey, manhandling is not necessary just because I'm a man. Naruto said. I would. Aphrodite said. Mom. What? As the Lastrigonian that held him at bay forced him to watch Percy fight another demigod that belonged to Luke's forces. Ethan Nakamura an unclaimed boy from Hermes' cabin that looked like he had a huge chip on his shoulder. Percy frowned and looked down at the mention of Ethan. That, and he looked like the bastard son of Kakashi, who was staring intently at the boy's eye patch from his own place in Sylvia's grasp. Leo's eyes went wide since Nemesis said her kid was missing an eye, was this him? She really did like him, it seemed. Quiet, Antaeus said, you fought already once before, proven worthy to be immortal champions of my temple. A mighty honor, Hades nodded, making Poseidon glare at him. The god of the dead just gave him a small amused smile. Hooray! The two shinobi drawled as their eyes stayed locked on the arena. Percy had Ethan on his knees, waiting to be killed. Do it! Ares cheered as Percy glared at him. Naruto watched intently as Antaeus ordered Percy to kill him. He knew what Percy's answer would be and it was a good answer as any for a hero, but that choice was going to get the rest of them, and consequently the camp killed. Yes, it very well could have, Peter. Dionysus tutted the boy, making him frown since Castor died. He should just kill him. Kakashi said under his breath. Naruto glanced at the white-haired shinobi who continued. The boy gave up his eye for something. And, he gives me a bad vibe. Child of Nemesis, they all have a bad vibe to them. Hermes shuddered. He's in Luke's army, Naruto said, getting a glance from the blonde in question. Of course he gives you a bad vibe. All of them are as slimy as the rottenest Nukenon. Nukenon, comparing us to your forces, Naruto. Luke asked, a brow arching. 
only to the people who are lower than trash. Naruto said. Ouch. Hermes winced as Ares snickered, making the blonde glare at him. Wah, it's true. The war god said and Apollo nodded begrudgingly in agreement. Luke scowled at him and Naruto grinned. Ah, what's wrong? Did I hurt your feelings? You'll regret not siding with me sooner, Naruto. Why? Because someone has daddy issues we should all hop on the bandwagon. Burn. Leo said simply, getting some looks from those who knew Luke. What? It was the perfect moment. The Olympians do not care for us. Lies. Apollo cried out as all the gods nodded with him rather sternly. Maybe. But that doesn't mean we should dedicate our lives and the lives of our siblings to defeating them. Stop squabbling. Antaeus said, already furious with how long this execution was taking. Son of Poseidon. Kill him. Percy ignored him and lowered his sword, offering his hand instead. Boo. You suck. Jackson. Still kicked your butt. Percy mocked the god making him see as his sibling snickered at him. Ethan stared at it for a moment before he took it and stood with Percy's help. Antaeus stood from his seat, outrage on his face. You'll both be sacrifices to Poseidon for insulting the games, he shouted. No thank you please, said God said, he did not want any more human sacrifices. Percy said something to Ethan under his breath before turning to Antaeus. Why don't you fight me instead? Prove that you've got dad's favor. Which he honestly doesn't. He has his mother's favor. Poseidon said. You wish to fight me. Antaeus looked a bit bewildered at the challenge and the crowd started to mumble. Naruto caught a few mutterings of, been a while, and, may have lost his touch, which made him arch a golden brow. I bet he has, Zeus said, making Poseidon roll his eyes at the attempt to make him irked. So the son of Gaia hadn't fought in a while, eh? The blonde grinned in a feral manner, eyeing the surrounding monsters like they were meat. I'll kill you, 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 and you especially. Ares pointed out through the crowd. When this fight was over he'd cover the others fleeing. Maybe pound Luke again, that would be fun. A punch here and a tooth flying there, oh yeah, just like old times. I like these old times. Ares, the speedy god shouted. Seriously, enough. Ares just chuckled darkly. I'm the greatest wrestler in the world, boy. Antaeus said with a smirk. Blasphemy. You insult the Hulkster in the ultimate war. Naruto shouted, getting muffled by the Lestrigonian's hand. Amen to that. The younger male gods agreed with the male demigods. To the warrior. Leo cheered. Hulkamani is running wild up in this bitch. Ares grinned. Ah, wrestling, the best thing ever. Talia looked ready to burst into laughter, though. Antaeus ignored the outburst. I've been wrestling since the pancration. The what? Kakashi asked. Naruto wriggled his way out from behind the Lestrigonian's hand and looked at his father's student. The pancration is a no-hold-bars hand-to-hand combat sport once held in the Olympic Games. It's like the Chunin Games. Ah, so it's a publicity stunt to get bragging rights and clients. That so figures that ninjas stole that from us, too. Zeus huffed. Honestly, the Greeks did it first. More or less. Interesting. Winner takes all. Percy had the two shinobi's eyes on him once more. His sword was pointed at Antaeus and a determined look crossed his face. I win, we all go free. You win, we all die. Swear on the river sticks. Okay. That's an epic moment. Nice one, Percy. Thank you, Frank. The hero of Olympus smiled. What's that? Kakashi asked under his breath. An oath so powerful that not even gods can break it without consequence. Naruto said darkly, thinking of this as punishment for the stupid asinine oath made by the big three. They all knew they couldn't handle that oath. They should have known better than to try. Well, I did. Hades smiled. His brothers grumbled, glaring at him for being so smug. Not that he was upset they broke it but it was the principle of the thing. I'm sure he wasn't, Aphrodite said knowingly, looking at Talia, who glared at her. Remind me to not do it impulsively. I have an issue with it myself, Naruto said sheepishly. He accounted that to Helios' presence, though. This shouldn't take long, Antaeus said with a laugh. I swear to your terms, fellow son of Poseidon. Famous last words, Annabeth smiled. 
He leapt from his seat and landed with a ground-shaking boom. So he can shake the earth. Ha ha, Poseidon said dryly to Athena's statement, making Percy stare up at the red-skinned giant nervously. He was outclassed in size once again, but he managed to get the best of Atlas for a second. He could beat this guy, right? Yes, Percy said, a smirk on his face. Kick his ass, Jackson. Naruto said from the sidelines as Antaeus cracked his knuckles, his tattooed arms flexing and making the waves move like Poseidon's domain. That's cool, I'll admit that. Apollo said, nice effect. A savage grin spread across Antaeus' face, revealing his carved teeth that elected Percy's attention. Weapons, the giant asked. I'll stick with my sword, Percy said, gripping Riptide tightly. You. Antaeus raised his hands out and wiggled his fingers in anticipation, the sausage-like appendages becoming one of the most terrifying things Percy had ever seen. To be honest, I might have peed myself. Leo freely admitted after seeing that image, props, Percy. I'll go without. Dot all I need are my hands to kill you. That's literally the 800th time I've heard someone say that. Kakashi said in annoyance. Go figure. Apollo nodded, impressed. 200th, Naruto said. Poor kid. Ares frowned for the young adult. Only 200 threats. How sad. Master Luke, you will be our referee. The honor is mine, Luke said, looking to Naruto as the blonde mumbled something. Excuse me. Gonna act like daddy and be biased, Mr. Son of the Cheating God. Naruto asked. Hey. Hermes exclaimed, looking pissed. He isn't wrong. Athena huffed, making the blonde man pout. He prayed to his uncle to ignore the insult, since he respected doing whatever it takes to win in a fight, but not whatever it takes to win cash. A strange sense of honor, but it was what he went with. Well, okay, but just this once. Hermes said, forgiving the teen. A son of Hermes, Kakashi asked, getting glared at by Luke. You will be quiet. He hissed at the masked man and then glared at Naruto. I'm fairer than any Olympian can claim to be. Aphrodite's gonna be pissed at you for that one. Here, here, the goddess cried out, Hera and Athena glaring daggers at her when she smirked their way. Would you be quiet for one second? Luke snapped. The giant holding the whiskered blonde slapped his hand over Naruto's mouth, getting muffled groans, while Luke sighed in relief. Finally, he turned to the arena. Begin. It was too late, for Antaeus had already lunged at Percy. Trigger happy, huh, go count your gems, bonehead. Getting sidestepped and sliced deep in the side. Yeah, go Percy. Leo and Frank cheered, but Percy just shook his head. No, just wait and see, he groaned. He finished healing and got back to his feet, grinning savagely. He can heal, Piper asked, blinking in surprise. Yep, like you. Jason asked Percy, yep, just differently. The red giant charged again, and once more Percy avoided with a roll, coming out of it with a stab into the giant's side under his arm. Sand poured where blood should have, the dirt rising back up to cover the wound and heal it, as the dirt fell away and he was back to pristine condition. Antaeus, the strong giant that fought Hercules. Kakashi mumbled. Well, he certainly learned fast. Athena complimented. Heracles. Talia corrected with a small smirk, payback against her stepmother was due after all. Talia laughed while Hera scowled at her, why that little? Percy, he's a son of Gaia, a son of Ga, the giant standing near her silenced Annabeth, his hand covering her mouth. Her cries were now muffled but the message was sent and Percy thought back to his lessons with Naruto. Wow, Annabeth blinked, it's a miracle. Hey, her boyfriend cried out but she just playfully nudged him, showing she was teasing. He still pouted though. Antaeus, ran into Heracles in the midst of his eleventh task, had been challenging people for skulls to make into, well he got that far. And we were so hopeful. Talia commented, getting a glare from Percy. Percy evaded another attempted tackle and backpedaled to get more space between him and his, brother. A son of Gaia, well, that explained the dirt. Guess that with age and a lack of willing, or rather unwilling, participates in his temple dulled the need for Antaeus' strength, and so Gaia now heals him. At least we don't have to fight him. Leo commented, rather happy about it. 
She's almost as good a mother as his own. Well, she is very loving to her own. Hestia commented lightly. If Gaia could make blue food, there may be a chance for a tie. But Percy doubted that. Yes, Percy Jackson, Hades said in a drawl, Gaia would certainly do that. In fact, she makes the best dirt cookies ever. His sibling snickered at that one. No one was a better mother than Sally Jackson. Oh come on, it's not true. Apollo said to Percy, the god's own mother was amazing. Elsewhere, a red-haired woman with purple eyes sneezed. Or Naruto's mom, Apollo gleefully added, making the water boy and his father frown ever so slightly. Goodness, bless you, that summer cold must be in the air, her current lunch companion said. Kashina smiled at her. No, probably my Sochi talking about me. He loves spreading rumors. Come, come, tell me more about this class you're taking before my boss calls me back from my lunch hour. Honestly, I think she keeps me around just so she doesn't kill her mother. I'd believe it, Hades said dryly, getting Demeter to glare at him. I'll never understand how a florist family can be so violent. Ever witness Grainzilla? Hera commented, making her older sister flush brightly at that, while the rest of the siblings snickered in remembrance. Ah, you underestimate the savage secrets of the agriculture world. Let me tell you a story about a man named Hashirama. I'd like to hear more about him, Demeter commented eagerly. But who was Kashina with? Piper asked and got shrugs all around. Percy rolled to the side again and stabbed his sword to the hilt under the other arm. Riptide was lodged in Antaeus' ribs, that was good. Percy was flung to the other side of the arena, monsters cheering at that, and was now weaponless. That was bad. Very bad. Percy nodded. Antaeus cried out in pain, fumbling with the sword while Percy inwardly cursed stupid cheating healing gifts. All eyes locked onto a sheepish Percy. Let it be known that Percy Jackson does not recognize the word hypocrite in the dictionary because of his dyslexia. Percy. Annabeth frowned, but the boy shrugged. I just don't read it. I'm getting you the Greek version. Annabeth told him simply, making the boy pale greatly. Antaeus pulled the sword out and tossed it behind him, grimacing as the dirt trailed up the sand and covered the wound, healing him. When it was healed and the dirt had fallen away, he towered over Percy once more, smirking victoriously. Percy glanced to where Riptide had landed, making to move for it, but Antaeus blocked him. Percy looked to the other side, making an attempt to feint around the giant, only to quickly retreat as Antaeus picked up on that plan rather quickly. Well, damn, it was like trying to go around a brick wall, only the brick wall was poised to crush you as soon as you got too close. The best kind of bricks. Ares commented with a grin, eager to see Percy smashed. Nowhere to run now, Antaeus said, smirking. Now you see why I never lose, demigod. Come to me and I promise to make it quick. Pass, Percy said, feeling a familiar weight in his pocket. Thank you, Riptide. Percy grinned, best weapon ever. He needed to get the big oaf in the air somehow. Percy let his eyes look up, looking past Antaeus' smirking face. Chandeliers made from skulls of opponents long since dead hung above the arena on chains. And that is creepy, Hazel frowned, feeling sorry for the skulls and the people they belong to. Two thoughts came to his ADHD addled mind at that. First of all, who took the time to make those? Seriously, those were intricate and, despite the gruesome origins, very well put together. How were they being held together? Glue, some sort of monster guts he wasn't aware of. Really? Nico asked Percy, you're fighting for your life and you think about that. Percy shrugged, it was weird. You're weird. Hot meat kettle, guess what? The second and most important thought that hit Percy's head was a plan. There we go. Annabeth smiled brightly. If he went up, Antaeus would have no option other than to follow. So when the big oaf in question made a grab for him, Percy ducked under the arms, slipping around behind his half-brother and climbing up the giant's back as fast as he could. He jumped, using Antaeus' head as a step, to the chandeliers and thankfully didn't miss. Because that would have been awkward. Leo nodded. He heard Rachel cheer alongside Talia for him as he scrambled to the top. Percy smiled at Talia, I am touched, really. P.S.H., don't think it'll happen often. The hunter smirked at him. I know, 
but I'll take what I can get. Once more the question of how the chandeliers were made hit his mind. He could easily stand atop them like they were stone. It was mind-boggling. Percy, focus, Frank said. I cannot help how my mind works. Coward, you are not worthy to be a son of Poseidon. Antaeus said with a glare. Nonsense. Poseidon frowned. He jumped for the chandelier, but Percy had climbed over to another rope. Come down here and face me. You come up and get me. Percy said in return as he grabbed a nearby chain bar of a chandelier and used his sword to cut it. Coward. Sticks and stones. Fat ass. Hestia gave a light glare to her nephew, who had the decency to look sheepish. Sorry, Aunt Hestia. Percy Jackson. Talia said in mock anger. The mouth on you. Indeed. Hestia nodded to Talia, who gave a mock serious nod back, glaring at Percy while trying her best not to laugh. Talia. Seriously not the time. No, it is. Talia grinned. Nice one, other Talia. Antaeus jumped again catching the chandelier and climbing as best he could up it. Percy finished cutting the chain and swung it at Antaeus, managing to hook it on his diaper-like loincloth on the fifth try. Ew, was the response of pretty much everyone. Hey, I had to do it. Percy said, he had it far worst. He attached it to the chain he clung, securing it as best he could. Antaeus grabbed two other chains to keep from flipping when he tried to return to the ground since he was kept in the air by his keister. Percy just prayed that the loincloth would hold. It will, Athena said, getting some looks, what? It has strong stitching. Only you, owl freak. Ares said, getting a scowl from the wisdom goddess. With the expertise of a monkey, Percy swung around, looping chains like the messy child he was around his half-brother. Antaeus cursed and swore at him in Greek and English, which increased as Percy dropped to the ground. Antaeus suspended in the air by the chains wrapped around him. I'll kill you. Get me down, roared the red-skinned giant. Free him, Luke said. He's our host. Then you do it. Talia rolled her eyes. I'll free him, Percy said, spinning his sword around and holding it parallel with his face before thrusting the blade forward. He impaled Antaeus in the stomach, sand immediately pouring out of his body. He started to dissolve unable to meet the earth that protected him so readily while the audience watched on in disbelief. And that's how you do it folks. Percy grinned. Show off. Annabeth teased, but it was ruined as she kissed his cheek. I try. When it was done, nothing remained except for a loincloth hanging from a chain. Worst spoil ever, Percy said with a scowl. That really is. Piper nodded in agreement. He turned to Luke, who was seething while the monsters grew antsy. Jackson, I should have killed you long ago, Luke said with a glare. But you wimped out like a bitch. Ares, you tried. Let us go, Luke. We had a deal with Antaeus. I won, we go free. Percy said. Antaeus' oath dies with him. Luke said coldly, glaring at Percy before looking to the monsters holding the shinobi. Kill them, all of them. He turned and met Annabeth's eyes. Except for her. I want to speak with her before our great triumph. Asshole. Percy scowled. Yes, look was decent in the end, but he still hated him somewhat. Go near her, Luke, and I'll kill you. Talia said heatedly, making Annabeth's eyes widen along with Luke's. Wow. Go Talia. Jason said as even his sister was blinking at that one, but then again it was perfectly understandable. And that's our cue. Kakashi said, bursting into smoke along with Naruto leaving only logs in their stead. A hand of lightning burst through the chest of Sylvia, who gave a shriek of horror while the Lestrigonian giant next to her lost his head thanks to Eclipse. Like a ninja, Frank said with a grin. Naruto stood in the giant's place, fending off monsters with his sword while Kakashi rushed over to where the girls were being held hostage, Talia already taking the other guards out, the remains of her binds laying in burnt ash from the application of high voltage of static. Love that. Talia grinned for her other. Kakashi used his sword to cut Rachel's binds, leaving her and jumping down to the main arena where Percy stood, holding an icy whistle. Kakashi grabbed the boy and jumped back up to the stands as he blew the whistle. Best whistle ever, the son of the sea said. Too bad it could only be used once. Kelly screamed as she was suddenly tossed through the air, 
landing on Luke and knocking him down with her bronzed leg. A giant black mastiff appeared next to Talia and she was about to stab it until Percy stopped her. Wait, it's Mrs. O'Leary. The bark she gave at her name shook the cavern. Wonderful, you have a giant dog. Talia said dryly. Hey, Percy glared at Talia. You do not diss the hellhound. You have a giant cat. Exactly. Percy nodded, making Talia snort. That's Whiskers' cat. See, wethead, the hunter smirked, making the boy grumble about stupid cousins. We need to leave, Annabeth said. I'm not leaving Mrs. O'Leary. Percy said with a frown. Go, Jackson, Kakashi and I will make sure she gets out of here. Naruto said, holding off monsters as best he could while Kakashi leaned back and shot a wave of fire from his masked mouth, incinerating the monsters that charged him. How does the mask stay on and not burn? Leo questioned with a scratch of his head. Fireproof, Hephaestus suggested. Nah, it's because he's a badass. Hermes said, as though it were obvious. Mrs. O'Leary jumped into a pile forming near the group, biting and chewing their way out there. Talia held up the rear, stopping just at the exit while looking at Naruto, who looked over his shoulder and gave her a nod. She nodded back and left, the doors slamming shut behind them. So now what? Kakashi asked as he fended the monsters off. We can't do this forever. We don't have to, Naruto said, making clones and letting them fend off the monsters. He whistled and got the attention of the hellhound. Come on girl, take us to Daedalus. He knows, Annabeth said, jaw dropping along with Percy. The hellhound barked again and rushed over to them. Kakashi climbed atop the giant dog's back. She charged to the entrance in the west, Naruto jumping onto her back, waving farewell to Luke with a ball of red wool in his hand. Oh, nice, Hermes blinked in shock, Apollo was laughing. Swiped your kid good. Yeah, yeah, Hermes waved off, his pride a bit wounded. Still, it was a nice move and he gave the boy props. No. No, Luke roared, getting to his feet. Naruto, I'll kill you, horribly, painfully. Love you too, Luke. Naruto said with a gleeful laugh as he left his fellow blonde behind. Bromance much, Hazel asked with a grin, getting some laughs. Luke slammed his fist onto the dirt. Damn it. Ruined. It's all ruined. Is it? Luke spun around to glare at who spoke, his eyes going wide when they landed on the speaker. W what are you? Cracked lips spread up into a cruel smile as golden and red eyes locked with blue. Your salvation. Of course, another bad guy. Apollo said with slumped shoulders, damn, right when things were going Team Olympus way. So, he's pretty much the demigod equivalent of Sasuke. Kakashi asked. Ouch, the messenger god frowned, that one hurt. That guy was really crazy. Pretty much, except his Orochimaru happens to be a nearly all-powerful titan king that terrorized the world under his rule. And that would be bad if it happened again, yes. Very, said the entire room, yep, Naruto said with a nod. You seem to be taking all this in stride. I've been reading, Kakashi said simply, remind me to get you the demigod version. Naruto said, quirking a grin. I would appreciate that, we always get the facts right. Annabeth nodded. He patted the side of the hellhound they rode on. A good dog, giant, but good, is this the dog that always catches its prey? Nope, Naruto said with a grin. This is Mrs. O'Leary, a hellhound that belongs to the camp's new swords master, Quintus. He wasn't at camp when I left though. I wonder why, Annabeth said dryly. Quintus, that sounds rather foreign. It means the fifth in Latin. Fifth what though? I dunno, fifth son. Could it be the fifth sword's master? We don't have those, Percy said, just skilled campers. Who thinks that far ahead? And we've never had a sword's master. We had some campers that were pretty good at it, though, like Sir Douche a lot back there. And look where it got him. Ares tutted mockingly, getting some glares. Ah. I'm thinking of retiring from the shinobi forces and I could really use a nice retirement job away from all that death. Ninja teacher. The demigods cheered, so awesome. I'll see what I can do. Kakashi's eyes turned upward in a smile. I knew there was a reason you were my favorite student. Ah, Apollo smiled. You taught Sasuke the Chidori. Boo, Apollo frowned. 
For the last time, he was going up against the case cage. Excuses. The two shinobi continued to bicker on Mrs. O'Leary's back, the hellhound ignoring them as she ran in the direction of where her master was. Mush. Leo cried out, getting a few snickers. The group of four escaped far enough from the arena that they escaped, Percy brooding over what Ethan said about Mercy being pointless in this war. It's true, Ares said, getting Apollo to sadly nod since his brother was telling the truth. He and Rachel sat near the campfire they set up in the tunnel, making small talk about what they went through and Percy getting a bit more out about the girl. Annabeth pouted at that, Talia and Annabeth walked away. Talia leading the younger blonde girl in search for some spare twigs. It was partially because Annabeth was getting more and more hostile towards Rachel, and partially because Talia needed to talk to Annabeth. Someone's in trouble, shut it, death breath. Talia, Annabeth said after a moment. Yeah, Annie, Talia asked, looking over her shoulder at the girl. D did you mean what you said to Luke? Probably, Talia guessed, making Hermes frown along with Annabeth. Talia stopped, turning around and letting Annabeth seeing her grave face. To be completely honest with you Annie, yes. Yes I did mean what I said to Luke. C. B. But Talia, he. Annabeth, this needs to stop. Talia said, cutting the daughter of Athena off. Tell her. Percy. Annabeth frowned, but he was unmoving on this one. Luke. Luke chose his side. We can still. No. Annie, we can't. Talia said, her eyes filled with hurt. I'm done with him. He poisoned me, Annie. Do you know what that feels like? That kind of betrayal, it runs deep. After growing up together on the run, to wake up and find out that your friend poisoned you, it was hard to even fathom forgiving him. I really couldn't, Talia admitted freely, as Jason was frowning with clenched hands. But last winter, Annie, you weren't there, seeing him at his worst. He stabbed me and I nearly died. Yeah, so stabbing him back is the best plan. Agreed. Zeus said to Ares, making Hermes sad at that. Annabeth looked ready to protest but Talia wouldn't let her, bending down to pick up some more twigs. That betrayal alone shattered whatever remained of the trust I had in him. I'm sorry, Annabeth, but I can't give him a third chance. It's always threes, Percy noted. Seriously, it was. Annabeth faltered, trying to say something, anything to get Talia back on her side. I can feel her desperation from the pages. Hades commented, making Athena glare at him, but he shrugged it off. Do what you like, Annabeth. But if I run into him again, I'll kill him. The daughter of Zeus stood and began walking back, the sticks in hand. I can't bear to go through that kind of pain again. Talia lowered her tone even further looking at something in her other hand as she spoke. Not after I finally found peace. Ah, the feels. Apollo laughed as Talia looked a little red, but was happy for her other at the same time. How long would you say we've been riding? Naruto asked, lounging back and counting bricks as Mrs. O'Leary ran. Oh, about two, three hours tops. Kakashi said, flipping through his coveted Ika Ika first edition that was the most important part novel. Ah, Naomi, so innocent, so coy. Artemis fumed while Apollo silently gave a thumbs up to Kakashi. Must you really? Hum, oh, I'm sorry, would you like to read, too? Thanks but no thanks, Kakashi sensei. I'm already in a lot of hot water with my aunt as it is. Without doubt, Arte, come on, her twin pleaded. Humph, what does that, Naruto, I'm so going to treat you to ramen. While the offer is tempting, you've never treated me to ramen. I always end up paying anyway. With clear reason, Hazel nodded. I will this time, and I'll get you a cigar. Now that's classy, Hermes smirked. Smoking is bad for the lungs. Do you honestly care, considering I'm the son of the medicine god, and recovering addict? Addict. Did some stupid stuff when I was younger, about three years back. Very stupid, Hestia frowned. Ah, how's going to a strip club sound? No. Talia and Artemis frowned. What a pig. Apollo just shrugged. It was technically window shopping. I just said I'm in hot water with my aunt. I'm lucky she doesn't speak to my mother. Oh the holes they would rip into me. Wait. Kashina Senpei is alive. 
Kakashi asked, his face turning pale. Well, someone's scared of someone, Apollo grinned, who this sounded fun. Yeah, that deal I made with Lord Hades was a real good one. Naruto said, proceeding to tell his sensei everything about his deal. After getting the clarification on Kashina's status, Kakashi was now stark white. Wow, she scares him good. Apollo whistled, excellent. Hades smiled that he had someone like that watching over his wife. He looked at the book in his hands. Uh oh. What? Something wrong? Naruto asked with a blink of his eyes. I it's nothing. Kakashi said with a swallow. Only that your mother made me swear to stay away from Jiraiya's work. I completely forgot about that after she. Oh boy, life just hates me. It's the fates. Percy said. I can tell when you're lying, sensei. How? Er. I mean, how? Sensei. Son of the truth god. Boned boy. Apollo grinned. He loved that power. Right. I knew that. Kakashi said sheepishly. Life was so much easier when I didn't have to worry about lying to Naruto. While I respect his desire to expand his knowledge, he just had to make things so much more complicated by doing so. Kakashi frowned. Great. Now I have to be careful with what I say. We all do. Hermes pouted while Apollo grinned even more. Naruto arched a brow as Kakashi began mumbling to himself. His sensei wasn't normally one to act. Well, like he ran into Dionysus on a bad day. Life was nicer when he was drinking. Helios said. I know. Dionysus nodded, looking at his father. Zeus just glared at him rather harshly. I figured. Naruto thought in return. Shame he had to go after that nymph. Is that what happened? He's married though, probably the most loyal marriage I've ever seen, at that. Yes, Dionysus. Hera smirked at him, eyes cold, indeed you are, yes. Er, yeah well, according to Chiron it's because he drank too much. Amazing how that backfired on him. Ares laughed cruelly as Dionysus glared heatedly at him. Really not surprised by that. Me either. What do you think that thing he said when we first met meant? No clue. This is you being. All seeing. Seer, isn't it? Very true. Artemis before her twin could answer, making him pout. Maybe. Helios, you're an asshole. Got that right. Ares grumbled as his cripple of a brother chuckled. Low bridge. Don't you mean low blow? Ow. Fuck. Naruto said, holding his head where a stray root hit him. Hey. Nice. Leo snickered. That was classic. Kakashi snorted as he sat upright while still flipping through his book, apparently over whatever was bothering him before. Ha ha, seriously, that's the last time I let you watch The Simpsons. Naruto thought with a glare at his former sensei for laughing at him. Love that show, Apollo grinned. Meh, lacking these days, Leo said. Blasphemy, heathenous lies. He cut the connection with Helios, crossing his arms. Hey. Mrs. O'Leary, I know you don't exactly speak, but give me a bark for yes and two barks for no. Okay. Mrs. O'Leary barked once. Cool. Are we there yet? There were two barks. How about now? Really? Athena questioned. He's doing that to a dog. Hellhound. Poseidon corrected her mockingly, getting a scowl that was ever so worth it. Naruto. I swear to your father, if you start. Ah. Come on sensei. I want to see if dogs can get annoyed. Naruto. You've met Pakun. Who? The audience asked. He's a summon. That's different. Nonsense. He's a good dog. The perfect dog. Mrs. O'Leary growled and Kakashi looked sheepish. Er. The second perfect. The hellhound barked once. Damn right. Percy smirked. That would be a yes. Naruto said to Kakashi, who rolled his eyes. Their banter was cut off as Mrs. O'Leary made a sharp right, bursting through the wall and startling the five people in the room overlooking the Garden of the Gods. Great view. The gods agreed to one another. Kakashi and Naruto fell off Mrs. O'Leary's back, both groaning from the jarring action. Naruto. Annabeth said happily while the giant hellhound bounded over to Quintus. Naruto. We found him. That's great, Annie. Now, if you don't mind. I'm going to sit here and rest my burning migraine for a moment. Naruto said, his eyes closing for a moment as he recovered from the landing. 
Damn branch really messed with his head. Tree trauma. Hades shook his head. The worst. Says you. Demeter huffed. I do say. Mr. Uzumaki. You're here as well. Naruto's eyes snapped open at that and he looked at Quintus. Quintus exposed mechanical arm. Back to Quintus. And then at the roof. So that's what his name means. Fifth body. Oh. Kakashi said in understanding. Huh. Go figure. So we have cyborgs. Leo questioned. Automations. His father corrected. Nah. That's a cyborg. I'm sorry, but who are you? Quintus asked the white-haired shinobi. I don't recall your name, if we've met before. Kakashi Hitaki, reinstated Anbu. Kakashi said, making Percy go wide-eyed. The guy was Anbu. He remembered Naruto saying that Anbu were the assassins and black operations of the shinobi village. What was he doing with them? Prissy peeing himself. No. Percy glared at the mocking Ares. I'm sorry, Anbu. Long story, Quint. Naruto said after he kipped up to his feet. One I'm sure you have time for, if you tell me why you gave our enemies this. Naruto held out the string and Quintus Daedalus gasped. How did you get that? You done now sucker. Ares grinned wickedly as Athena frowned ever so slightly. I stole it from the lightning thief. Naruto said, smirking, quite proud of himself for that comment. Ooh, good one. Apollo nodded in agreement. He played with the string for a minute before hardened sun filled eyes looked at the quasi immortal. I'll ask again. Dot why did you give Luke the string of Ariadne? He promised me a life free of my past, where I would be free from the judge of the dead. Daedalus said, looking solemn. It was an enticing deal. How weak, Hades said, as Athena looked saddened by her son's actions. Kakashi, hold this, Naruto said tossing the ball to his fellow shinobi, before he unsheathed Eclipse and moved in a flash, holding the blade to Mrs. O'Leary. Hey, Percy shouted, frowning, no threatening the dog, while holding a bronze arrow at Daedalus' throat. Mrs. O'Leary growled for the threat to her master, but stayed at bay because of the sword. You sold the camp out, because you couldn't accept your past. Wimp, Ares sneered, you haven't been in fear for your life for two millennia. It was a cowardly move on my part, I admit, but if it's the price for freedom irk. Daedalus cut off as the arrow pressed into his throat. How the mighty have fallen. Hermes shook his head. It was a pity really. If you had only lost your son, I would be sympathetic to your fear of minnows. Naruto said with a glare. You killed your nephew, Daedalus, out of petty jealousy. You may not have done it physically or even on purpose, but you killed him. You are forever branded murderer. He spat the word out and Daedalus flinched. Sniveling little coward. Ares, Athena said in a tight tone, we get it. Hum, I'm not sure. The war god scratched his chin, making his sister scowl. He grinned, so worth it. Now you make the same mistake twice. I should save us the trouble and send you to Minos myself. Naruto, you can't. He can still help us. Percy said in an attempt to help the man he wasn't exactly fond of, but didn't think damning him was the solution. I'd do it, Nico said, getting some looks that made him shrug, a screw up like that. Without question I would. I don't think he can. Talia said, her eyes narrowing at Daedalus' depressed look. You've lost control of it, haven't you? Yes. Dot yes I have. No, Annabeth said, horrified. You mean... The labyrinth grows and obeys no one but itself now. Daedalus said ominously. Damn, Leo whistled, that was scary. Well that's wonderful, Naruto said, before turning to the opening. We have guests. A very good awareness you have, heir of Helios. Kelly said, walking into the room with a bound Nico. You were supposed to stay in camp this time. Hades told his son, who looked sheepish. Oops, big oops. Percy nodded getting Nico to scowl at him. But unfortunately, a bit late on the uptake. I am so fired, Naruto said under his breath. Well, you might not be, Hades said, since Nico did go off on his own. Sorry Naruto, Nico said in a small voice. But, my friend said you guys needed help. Yes, Minos was quick to sell this little cutie out if we agreed to his deal. Kelly said, Daedalus going wide-eyed. Well, there goes that deal, Hazel said dryly, 
Should have gotten it in fine print. Hermes added. W what? Treachery. That wasn't part of the deal. He said, sounding absolutely terrified. Should have made a swear on the sticks, tin man. Kelly said smugly. Or that works too. The messenger god said. Can't believe I'm asking this, but what would it take for you to let Nico go? Naruto asked, getting looks from everyone. Well, we do want Hecate on our side. Kelly said, frowning at him. You've been keeping her inches away from joining us. Whatever side gets you, gets the goddess of magic's favor. Sweet. Apollo grinned. She put that time spell all around Manhattan, so if we get her on our side. Zeus was grinning a bit at that. Hecate was one of the most powerful minor gods after all, right up there with Triton. I totally understand. Rachel, really, I have to give her credit Percy. Aphrodite said, making Percy pout. Percy, he's hot, so what? Such a boy, he is. Piper, Hazel, and Talia nodded. What's so bad about that? The son of the sea questioned, but received no answer. Would you please stop talking as if I'm not right here? Talia asked the clear-sighted mortal in irritation while her cousin asked what Rachel's comment meant. Everyone just looked at Percy, okay, so I don't know girl talk, forgive me. Forgiven, Annabeth told him simply, she was fine with it really. We've been over this, it's called window shopping. Rachel said, waving Talia's annoyance off. All of you shut up. Kelly ordered, her claw digging into Nico's cheek. Now, tin man and boy toy, front and center. Boy toy, Apollo glared at Kelly. Naruto lowered his arrow and sword, looking at Daedalus. You heard her, boy toy. Okay, that was a good reversal. You're the boy toy, Kelly told the blonde, but he just grinned. Nah, I'm the tin man. Naruto looked at Talia, right. Correction, now that is an amazing reversal. Apollo. Talia was red in a second. Damn it, whiskers. Rachel clicked her tongue. Lucky. Mortal girl, I swear. Really, stop. Talia said, it was annoying for her other and she could feel it from here. Enough shouting, Kelly said. Another word and I'll irk. Shish. Kakashi said, using Ariadne's string as a garrote to choke the monster. Sleep now, sleep. And, she's down. Holy hell that was awesome. Ares cheered, like a real ninja. Frank nodded. I wanna be a ninja now. Leo gawked. That. Dot was terrifyingly awesome. Annabeth said, Percy nodding in agreement, his green eyes wide as he stared at the unconscious monster. That was what Anbu did on a daily basis according to Naruto, since most of them went insane around the third year assigned to the Corps. Naruto said they used the insane soldiers because those, crazies, were the only ones with enough experience to get the job done right. I try, Dionysus said in a humble tone. He even joked that with all the voices in his head, he'd be a prime candidate for Anbu. Come to think of it, Percy looked at the white flak jacket on Naruto and the headband tied to his arm, taking note of both for the first time since his head was relatively clear. He'd have to ask what he missed, because last he checked, Naruto said he wouldn't ever be going back to that village. Well, there's a funny story about that. Piper smirked. Kakashi put the string away and caught the chains that Daedalus tossed to him, using them to bind her. During this exchange, Naruto went to his charge and freed him with Eclipse. No sooner was Nico free did Naruto smack him upside the head, getting a loud cry from the boy. Hey, Nico cried out for his other. Again, Hades said simply, getting his son to look betrayed. Why'd you hit me, smack, ow, why, thank you. Idiot, that's for leaving the camp after I strictly told you to stay put. The second one was for getting captured and not shadow traveling out of there. Naruto said before whacking Nico again. Why, always threes. Percy told his cousin smugly, it was usually him that got hit. Nico just scowled at him. Ow w w, and that was for the chewing out I'm going to get from your dad. Thanks, that's exactly what I wanted to deal with after all this was over. Not to mention the hell I'm going to get from Bianca, well I could always turn that around and tease her about Will. Naruto said scratching his chin. Wianka for life, Apollo cheered, making Nico and Hades scowl deeply. Nico glared at his, protector. Shut up, 
I don't want to think about that. Naruto just gave him a feral grin. Wionka for life. See, silence, Apollo. The Dark Prince glared, but the Sun God was in far too good of spirit to care. I think I hate you. I love you, too, Nico chan Ah, see Nico, love, shut up, Hazel, I definitely hate you. Naruto just chuckled before turning to Daedalus. So, now what are you going to do? I'm going to leave before the Empasa wakes up. Daedalus said, he went to Mrs. O'Leary's side and patted her head. Probably try to make my way to camp, maybe. Not even willing to fix things. How un Athena of him. Poseidon said, making his rival glare at him. Really? Naruto asked, arching a brow as he tensed up. The rest of the group joined him. You're outnumbered, Daedalus. You come quietly, or we make you, actually, come peacefully or come in pieces. There, no innuendo. Ah, the male gods pouted, getting most to roll their eyes at their maturity. Gods, damn it, whiskers. Talia said, closing her eyes and trying to get that sentence out of her head. Sorry, I've had no one but Mr. Porn book for company for the past five hours. Not his fault, Apollo said, but Artemis rolled her eyes. Gets it from his teacher. Oh, let it go already. I'm not a saint like you, I get it. Let me live my life. Nah, you are so cruel to me. Apollo sulked as Artemis had a tiny smile, she loved to mess with him. Ah, are we not friends anymore, Naruto? My feelings are hurt. Yep, shot through the heart and all that jazz. Naruto said, making Kakashi pout behind his mask. And you, Naruto, are to blame. Apollo sang out dramatically. My cute little student became a jerk. Got other things on my mind, Kakashi. Good things. I will hunt him. Artemis frowned. Seriously. Miners are in the room. And the millennia old robot dude is gone. Rachel said, all eyes looking to her and then to where Daedalus once stood. Wow. Robot man moves fast. Leo whistled. And quietly. Talia nodded. Well. Shit. Well said. Talia. Really. Talia. Percy scolded with a smirk. Shut up. Percy. Yeah. Percy. Shut up. Make me. They spent the next 20 minutes arguing over what to do before settling on trying to find their way out of the maze. Daedalus had betrayed them and left them for broke, but they had the two ways out of the labyrinth. Things were definitely looking up. True, both the string and Rachel, you are set to be perfectly honest. Athena said. Better off than we were. Percy noted. Well on the bright side, Naruto said, we've got Ariadne's string. Kakashi was playing with the string while whistling idly, making Percy walk closer to Annabeth and away from the trained killer. Smart move. Annabeth nodded. She'd keep her distance too. And we've got a fork. Got two golden paths. Rachel said with a swallow as they stopped at the fork. Hum. Got two paths, which means we either can get out either way, or we were destined to walk both. Kakashi said, getting a glower from Naruto for his comment. He made a cat's cradle with Ariadne's string and hummed in content. Which way, Naruto? Not my call, Naruto said. He looked to Annabeth. What do you say Annie? I don't want to choose. Annabeth said without hesitation, sounding rather small. Naruto glanced at the corridors and noted that they were exactly alike, making him hum in curiosity. He looked at her as she elaborated. Early on in the quest we met Janice. Ah. Apollo nodded in understanding where she was going with that. The R.O. Ma. Kakashi avoided a kanai thrown at his head by Naruto. He arched a brow and Naruto gave him the signal for later. Still a secret. Jason nodded at Naruto's action. Dot and he wanted me to make a choice. Annabeth continued, holding her arms as the tension from that moment fell down on her again. Like the fate of the camp depended on what I chose. Okay. So you don't want that kind of pressure. Naruto said, pulling a drachma out and flipping it. Heads we go left, tails we go right. Leave it to Taish. Hermes grinned, smart call. That sounds good, Annabeth said, giving him a grateful smile. Naruto caught the Greek currency and clapped it onto the back of his other hand. Tails, we go right. Should go left, Hephaestus said and got looks, what? NASCAR logic. Rachel led them down the path, 
Before falling back with Percy and Annabeth, letting Naruto and Talia take the lead, Nico close behind them. They came to a stop at another metal door with the symbol of Daedalus on it, Naruto reached for the handle and he paused. There is something very old and very powerful behind this door, Helios said gravely. Pan, Hermes hoped. Percy paled. Oh no, I felt it too. Naruto thought before stealing his resolve and grabbing the door handle. It opened slowly with a loud creak, and a few seconds, almost a minute, later, the door was open letting the group of eight into a small room with only a cone of light in it. It was centered on a golden box with ancient glyphs all over it. Crap, the big three said as one while the other gods looked fidgety. Oh, shit, Helios said, kid, you gotta go check it. Make sure there's nothing, reformed in there. That's like, the opposite thing you should do in this situation. Leo exclaimed. Monster movie logic, duh. The Latino told Piper. This screams bad idea, Kakashi said, grabbing Nico's shoulder and keeping him outside. We'll wait here. Ah, oh, but I want to see. No, no you don't. Nico shook his head. Nico, stay with Kakashi. Naruto said, making the boy pout. He looked at Percy. Jackson, you're with me. Talia, you're on support. Fine, Talia said begrudgingly keeping close to the door with a frown as the two boys entered the room, going immediately to the illuminated box. Don't open it, Hazel muttered, never open shiny boxes. What do you think it is? Percy asked, I'll tell you what it's not. Naruto said, it's not an endless supply of ramen. Real reassuring, Percy said, for me it is, Naruto said, and that's all that matters in the end. Apollo nodded sagely. They stopped at the edge of it and shared a look before both of them grabbed the edge of the lid and pushed. With a bit of effort on their part, the lid moved, creaking open like the sound of stone grinding against another stone. Naruto and Percy both grunted as the lid fell off. Smoke exited the box and they covered their eyes. When they opened their eyes, their jaws fell open. Oh no, Naruto said, horrified. There lay Luke, eyes closed and his arms crossed like he was a pharaoh of Egypt. His skin wasn't sickly anymore, and his body seemed to be a bit bulkier than before. Oh Luke, Hermes sobbed once, not even able to look at the image. Apollo just patted his shoulder like a good brother. Luke's eyes snapped open and locked on Percy's. Well, it's the little hero. I peed myself a little. Frank admitted with no shame, some others joined him. Oh crap, Percy said, and you brought a friend. Luke said, though it wasn't Luke speaking. This wasn't the voice of a boy pushed over the limit of his patience, this was the voice of a being that had nothing but patience. He has all the time in the world. Apollo joked to lighten the mood, but God looks instead, too soon. Too soon, everyone said, Percy, let's go, Naruto said, both of them backing away as Luke got out of the coffin, since that's exactly what type of box it was. Good idea, Percy said agreeing in an instant with the older demigod. Leaving so soon, not Luke asked, holding his hand up in an effort to stop the two as they turned to run, both of them moving like they were in slow motion. The elder gods bulked, hoping to never see that power ever again. Talia shot a bolt of lightning at it, but the bolt stopped in midair, going at the same speed as the two boys were. I think not. Of course he slows down lightning. Talia said plainly. Fuck us sideways, we're so dead. Helios said, wow, he's throwing in the towel fast. Poseidon blinked. What happened to the optimism? I never went against the big guys, well, only Atlas, but he was arguably one of the weakest. Kronos, Oceanus and father. Hell the fuck no, I didn't fight them. And they were the strongest. Hades surmised quietly. What do we do? Keep trying to run. Hey, back off, Rachel said throwing her plastic blue hairbrush at the smirking knot Luke. It hit him square in the forehead, his head snapping back and making him grab for it. That is the bravest mortal I have ever seen. Zeus proclaimed, someone send her something nice. Will do. Hermes waved off, looking miserable. Ow. Luke said, dazed. It seemed to also stop whatever spell was over Naruto and Percy, both of them running to the door as fast they could. Luke glared at them. Get back here. Flee. Flee. Flee like the wind. 
pass. Thanks for the offer, but we've got full plans. Naruto said, slipping behind the door with Annabeth and Kakashi. Push. They did, shutting the door with force as not Luke returned and ambled out of the coffin after them. Naruto turned around and slid down to his butt. Holy crap that was scary. Leo whistled, wiping his brow. Next time, we go left. That's what I said, the smith god said smugly. We get it hef, Apollo said. Chapter End